the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. It is already April 18th, 2023, hard to believe. Welcome, it's nice to see everybody here. Um, we'd like to start by establishing a quorum, please. Good morning. Mr. Wathers? Here. <coughs> Ms. Kirkner? Here. Mr. Lester? Here. Mr. Hoff? Here. Mr. Kane? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Commissioner Gordon? Here. Secretary Eisenhower? Here. Chair, please let the record reflect that seven members are present and we do have a one. Thank you. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next up, we have review and approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda that's been provided to us? No, there are no changes. All right, then the chair would be happy to entertain a motion for approval of the agenda as presented. I move, I move we approve the agenda. I second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Sounds unanimous to me. Okay, item five of our recently approved agenda is review and approval of minutes from March 21st and March 29th. Are there any suggested edits or changes to those uh, minutes? All right. Not I move we approve the minutes for both March 21st and 29th. Second. All right, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sounds unanimous, thank you. Um, we'll move on to item six, commission member reports. Um, I just, wanted to say that uh, today's my last meeting. I've been sitting here for on this dais for 10 years, um, and uh, my term expires. And uh, <clears throat> for anybody who is interested in the community, we're just community members. We serve, um, we volunteer our time, we go through a lot of training. It takes a big commitment. We get to work with the county. And I have to say, uh, coming out on the other end of this 10-year experience, I've learned so much uh, about our community, about the people in the county and how hard they work for our community. Um, I get to see community members like you all come each, uh, each time we're here and I get to hear comments from the community. I'm better informed uh, for this. I get to work with the professionals, the lawyers, the uh, developers, the engineers, all of which have uh, interesting perspectives and have all taught me things. And then my colleagues here and the commissioners um, have all taught me things and I like to think that we approach this with a um, with an open mind we don't have a political agenda um, we listen and we debate we sort of relish when we don't agree on things and we disagree I think very civilly and professionally and I think the community is better for it so it's been that's a long way of saying it's been a real privilege I've learned a tremendous amount I've grown from it um, and as I've said to anybody who will listen, if somebody gives you an opportunity to have a, even a small voice in a community you care about, um, why would you say no to that? So um, I said yes, and I'm glad that I did. So thank you all for putting up with me for 10 years, and thank you for all that you've given me. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Um, Commissioner? Uh, not a report per se, but uh, obviously we do appreciate your 10 years of service, so I do have a proclamation for you. Uh, Jeffrey A. Wathers, in recognition of exemplary public service on the Carroll County Planning and Zoning Commission, whereas Jeffrey A. Wathers represents the citizens of Carroll County on the Planning and Zoning Commission from May 2013 until April 2013, and whereas Jeffrey A. Wathers faith faithfully executed his Planning and Zoning Commission duties with objectivity, dedication, and professionalism, and whereas Jeffrey A. Wathers willing willingly gave his, of his time and resources in service of the community on matters of local significance before the planning and Zoning Commission, now and therefore the Board of County Commissioners acknowledges and distinguished service of Jeffrey A. Wathers to the citizens of Carroll County. We, the undersigned, hereby extend our admiration, gratitude, and sincere best wishes adopted this 18th day of April, 2023. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful surprise. Thank you very, very much. Uh, any other commission members have any? Um, yes. I am going to miss you terribly. All my crying and controlling, and you have not given in. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But seriously, I've learned a lot from you, and I hope um, I can fill a little bit of your shoes. Oh, you'll have no trouble. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Uh, I'm going to echo a lot of the sentiments, and I'll simply say, I know attorneys get a bad rap. <laughs> and um, there was an, an email sent out a while back by the Bar Association that cajoled the attorneys to stop telling jokes about attorneys because they were degrading their own profession. Jeff, you've been a terrific mentor to this entire group. We're going to meet, there's some great matter up here that I respect. All of you guys are great, but we're going to be diluted without you. Um, your attention to detail and words, which is your profession, is going to be sorely missed. So thank you. Thank you for everything. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, can I kind of say the same thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Relatively short time, but I've learned a lot. And truly respect your leadership on this uh, this board, this commission. Um, your insight, your your smarts, your um, balance, and uh, you will be sorely missed. Thank you. Appreciate it very I much. I would also like to echo that, but. You know, I, I, I'm like third, fourth longest person here because Peter came on about the same time I did. And so we're losing almost half of our tenure on this board. <laughs> Janice has been here almost as long, I believe, right? Eight years? Right? Uh, five. Five years. But, so um, just to, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate it, Jeff. It's been Maybe. great <laughs> knowing you, and I'm sure I'll see you around. I certainly hope so. Thank you. Yeah, and I would like to say the same thing as uh, I've only been on the board for a year now, but just... Uh, Learned, a, you know, just just learned a tremendous amount from you, and uh, you definitely are going to be sorely missed. Well, thank you, thank you. And thanks to all of you for being so patient while we uh, go through this. <laughs> but uh, really, do appreciate it. It's been a, it's been an honor to serve. Thank you. Well, with that, we'll move on to other business we have, which is the administrative report, Madam Secretary. Well, thank you for all of your service over the last 10 years. We have been through two master plans together, the Carroll County Plan and the Freedom Plan, um, and you were excellent in working with through those processes, and you've done an amazing job leading this planning commission. I appreciate all of your efforts, guidance, mentoring, and um, we're going to be sad to have you gone. Um, it's been really great, and it's going to be hard to fill your shoes, but thank you again for everything. Um, so with that... Uh, we have a fairly, even though it's only two item agenda, I anticipate a long meeting. We do kind of have a hard stop today. The commissioners will be using this room for the continuation of their budget discussions. So I believe we need to be out of here hopefully by noon. So just no pressure, but just letting you know that they'll need to convert the room over and that's what this will be used for this afternoon. And why we only put um, two items on the agenda for this morning. Um, and with that, I'm going to move right along then to extensions. Um, Laura Matthias has one extension to inform you about this morning. As we're keeping everything short, I'll just come halfway today. Good. Uh, Laura <laughs> Matthias, Bureau of Development Review. We do have one extension. It is P02053 Fern Hill. This was a subdivision creating 16 new lots, and it is the 12th extension on this. Um, it is in Commissioner District 2, and to note, they are currently working through the final plan stages on this, so um, they just couldn't meet that, that date, that expiration date, so they extended. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Laura. Um, and then also we have a few BZA cases, and with that, uh, Drew Gray from our department will just give you a brief update on Board of Zoning Appeals. Thank you, Ms. Eisenberg. Uh, Mr. Chair and the Commission members, just to, there's three Board of Zoning Appeals cases, which would cases would fall under your purview. The first case is case number 6442, which is Walter T. Kuhn Jr. under Commissioner District 8. The requested conditional use is for a contra contractor's equipment and storage yard. The requested variance is for the requirement of the use to be greater to, to be greater than one acre in size. And planning staff finds that this is not inconsistent with the 2014 Carroll County Master Plan as amended in 2019. The second case is case number 6444, Jennifer Grubbs in Commissioner District Number 2. The requested, the, um, the requested expansion of a non-conforming use is to replace the existing um, 
single family dwelling trailer on the property. Uh, planning staff finds that this request for an expansion of non-conforming use is consistent with the 2014 Carroll County Master Plan. And the, and the last case falling under your purview is case number 6445, which is Route 309 LLC in Commissioner District, District Number 3. And the requested conditional use is for propane, propane storage tanks not to exceed 2,000 gallons on the property. And the requested variance is for the requirement of 900 feet to 875 feet um, for, from the dwelling on the adjacent property. And planning staff finds that this request for a condition, conditional use and variance is um, consistent with the 2014 master plan. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm here. I don't think we do. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, that concludes my administrative report for this morning. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to item eight, which is administrative rules and procedures discussion. Yes. Um, so before you, you should have a copy of um, amended uh, administrative rules and procedures. We typically do this in November. As you rec recall, in a prior meeting, we brought this to you about adding an additional section for specifically pertaining to virtual meetings. So on page two, we added a new section under 3.2 virtual meetings, planning commission members to be considered present at meetings of the planning and zoning commission held virtually, must have their camera turned on and reply to the clerk of the planning and zoning commission in establishing a quorum, unless a bona fide technical issue prevents them from doing so. And this just adds clarity. We know it's common sense, but um, I think just to clarify what would be considered being present at a meeting, so that way when decisions are made, um, we can make sure, number one, that we have a quorum and we can accurately record, number two, the voting of a particular member. So having them visually on camera um, lets us know that they're there and not recusing themselves from a particular matter. Um, so with that, we would need a motion to amend the administrative rules and to add this particular section. All right. We talked about this before. Yes. Yeah. Uh, are there any additional comments? I, I have an odd question to ask. Um, so a lot of times when we do that, it's six o'clock at night and I have logged on, I'm, I'm there, I'm listening, but I will turn off my camera so I can choke down my dinner in, you know, in five minutes. Um, and I, you know, that's not a pretty, th pretty sight for anyone to watch. Um, is this going to preclude me from doing that? I'm going to need to keep my camera on the whole time, or can I can I pivot my camera? So I, I, I'm just just this, this is just a point of you know I, I, I'm not going to die. Obviously, my my, my volume's not <laughs> hurting here. Um, Jim, what do you what do you think? Do, do I need to to eat before or after or just you know? What, what well, I, I don't want to give you a legal opinion on when or when not you <laughs> should eat. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, I would just say that for the the purposes of this is just to make sure uh, that the commission is as transparent as possible. Right. That we're above reproach. That people see just like they see you guys up here. Um, that you're actively listening and engaged in discussions of an agenda item and when it comes time to vote that you're actually present to vote on it. So when there's big items to be discussed, um, like the discussion items or a vote, your camera should be on and you should be in the frame. You know, during the, uh, I don't know, the administrative matters, it, it's always good to have your camera on, but if you had it off while you were eating your dinner, that would, uh, that would be fine. I just wanted to know what's expected. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's all, because I, I can change whatever it is I'm doing. And I, I think we've all kind of done that from time to time. Yeah, so I think living out of COVID, you know, we've all come to realize, number one, this, to me, this uh, change in the rules is good, but like all rules of procedure, typically read into them is some reasonableness. Um, and so I do think from a public meetings standpoint, the public being able to see that we were present when roll was called and a quorum was established and we'll have a discussion <coughs> but certainly if you have to you know turn your camera off to step away for a, a couple of minutes and and come back i don't my sense is that certainly doesn't violate the, the right it's just like if you left the dais right now for whatever reason right got it okay thank i just wanted to have a 
point of clarification and I apologize for slowing things down. Let's roll. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? If not, I'd be happy to entertain a motion for approval. I'll make a motion that we approve the administrative rules and procedures uh, change uh, reflecting virtual meetings. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Sounds like none. Can we just do a voice vote? Yes. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstaining? All right, okay. sounds like the motion carries. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Next is item nine, Manchester annexation number 41, Patapsco 91 LLC. Ms. Weber is leading us in this discussion. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Of course, yeah. um, with us today, we have the town of Manchester um, town administrator, Alex Paraconi. We also have Kelly Schaefer, who is representing the property owner, Patapsco 91 LLC. Thank you, Hannah. And this is Shane McQuay, the property Good owner. Good morning. You're welcome. Um, so this will probably look familiar to you. It was first introduced at your March 29th evening meeting. Today we are here for a discussion and recommendation on the zoning waiver and comment letter to the Board of County Commissioners. So this annexation is in the Manchester area. It is owned and being petitioned by Patapsco 91 LLC. It is approximately 13.92 acres with access to Jommer Drive as well as Washington Way. We are in the southern part of the Manchester Municipal Growth Area and their corporate limits. If you'll remember from our previous meeting, we discussed that this property is a part of an existing enclave, but annexing this property would shrink the existing enclave. So this also means that we are um, adjoining the corporate limits of Manchester. Here is an aerial view of the annexation area. Again, it is 13.92 acres. It is slightly improved with some dwellings, but there is nobody residing on the property. The current zoning of the annexation area is R40,000 residential and conservation in the county. The petitioners have requested to go into the R10,000 and conservation um, zoning districts in the town of Manchester. Because the um, R10,000 and R40,000 districts are substantially different, these, there is a zoning waiver required. And I'll just go back and say that the conservation piece is um, intended to be left the same, and just the R40 piece is going to be rezoned to R10,000 in the town. The designated land use for the annexation area is medium density residential. This is taken from the 2018 Manchester Comprehensive Plan. This area is currently in the no service area, area for water and sewer. But as we discussed in our previous meeting, this area is going to be brought into the priority service area during the triennial update. And that's currently underway. So the Department of Planning is just recommending that the town of Manchester give public notice by posting the property prior to the date of the public hearing and notifying all the adjoining property owners. We have not received any other agency comments from um, county agencies. And um, we are looking for a favorable or unfavorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on the comment letter and zoning waiver to the county commissioners. And we are set to meet with the board on April 20th, this Thursday, and April 27th, next Thursday. Is there any questions? I don't think I have any. I appreciate your presentation <laughs> last time and this time. Any, <laughs> any other members have any questions? No. In full disclosure, I do live very close to this piece of land and People that I know from this area, they don't seem too happy about it, um, just because the neighborhood is, it's, it's very packed now. Um, there's all a lot of traffic on the road, especially Susan Ann. So there's a lot of concern about adding more cars, more pedestrians, well not pedestrians. Um, but like I said, I mean, a lot of the people that have, have come to me, um, just don't see the need to add 14 more homes back 
behind here because it's it's always been that way. And there is concern too with what it is going to do to people's property values, whether or not it'll go up, go down, but there's also concern with people in, are they gonna see any increases to water, sewer, all that, because the plan is to extend water and sewer down onto this property. So whether or not that's true, I'm just bringing up concerns of people who have come to me, like I said, in full disclosure, I do live very close to this, this parcel of land right there. So um, these are just all things as we continue. I, I do know that you will probably receive some kickback from the existing community moving forward on this to add more homes into a already very saturated neighborhood. Ms. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Mr. Smith. Um, I appreciate those comments. I'm sure we may see some of those citizens at the um, public hearing for the town, but I did just want to briefly clarify that this request is purely the annexation request. No, and I understand that. I'm just right. kind of giving you what... And, and I think often the two, it's difficult to separate the two, yeah. but this will be required to go through a site and or subdivision plan process through the town, through planning commission meetings and all of that to ultimately develop with any lots. The town has been um, clear and it's in uh, Hannah's staff report as well that the town has seen a concept plan for this property with the requested zoning that shows 14 lots and that would be a maximum that the town would allow on this property despite otherwise being allowed more than that if you just do the math of you know R10 on with the acreage um, so that's been a conversation that's occurred at Planning Commission and at Mayor and Council for the town and then ultimately we're looking forward to a May 9th I believe public hearing um, at the mayor and council for the town of Manchester as well. But we're also here to answer any other specific questions that anybody has in addition. Thank you. Thank you. Town of Manchester have anything they'd like to add? Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. I, I apologize, I was incorrect at the March 29th meeting. The date for the public hearing at town hall is May 9th at, zero, at 7.30 p.m. in the evening. I apologize for having the wrong date, I wish to correct the record. As for Mr. Smith, the water sewer, there's always a public works agreement between the town, the town and the developer to install the appropriate items that do not affect the individual taxpayer. If they are concerned about water and sewer rates at the last council meeting, that was all introduced and I uh, ask you to have them reach out to the town or come to the council meeting to discuss their concerns over that. Um, those rates will not, are not at all in any way uh, changed or altered by this development. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not saying there, there will or won't be, but I'm just bringing up concerns of people that, you know, when you go for a walk, hey, you know, so. I also encourage them to come to the Planning and Zoning Commission meetings. There is one yeah. tonight, and uh, so they as, would find out a lot more said, information about yep. future development in the town. Yep, so that's the best way to get ahead of it all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the I get this is just the annexation piece. So the, the future meetings, conversations will, when I was reading through this, I was like, where are the ratios for the police department that we typically see and all, all that kind of stuff? That'll be part of that next process and the schools and all that kind of thing. Yeah, that'll be part of the site plan process with adequate facilities. Right. And just to clarify, that it'll be within the town. Yes. Not within, well. you will not see this again. Right. No, okay. exactly. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? Are there any members of the public that would like to comment on this particular matter? <clears throat> All right, seeing none, <laughs> uh, is there anything else that any of you would like to add before we put this up for a vote? No, we appreciate your consideration and your time here today. Mr. Weathers, thank you for your service on this commission. It's been a pleasure to appear in front of you over the years of my career here. Um, and, and it's very much appreciated. So I just wanted to say that. And if there are any specific questions, um, we're happy to answer them. But I would request that you f uh, forward a favorable recommendation, recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners on this annexation request and the zoning waiver. Thank you. So. At this point, is there a motion that you would like to make? Sure. I'll make a motion that we forward a favorable request for the annexation and the zoning waiver for um, the Manchester annexation number 41 Patapsico 91 LLC. 
and you said favorable request. I, That'd be a recommendation. Yes, right? recommendation. Sorry, sir. That's all right. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to forward a favorable recommendation on the um, mm. I guess technically the comment letter is in there as well as the, mm -hmm. the zoning waiver correct um, is a do we need a roll call for this no or? okay is there any further discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. anyone opposed or abstaining the recommendation favorable recommendation shall be forwarded okay great thank you thank so you much thank you everyone thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to item 10, which is uh, entitled a special report. This is case S-21-0004, Sheets, Westminster. While, we're, while you guys are setting up, I just want to exercise a little prerogative. We could take a five minute recess yes. just to get situated. Okay, so we'll stand in recess for five minutes. Thank you.
Welcome back. We will call the uh, meeting back to order. And uh, before us is item 10 on the agenda, which is uh, labeled a special report. And as we head into this, I just want to sort of make expectations clear uh, what this is and what it is not. Um, <clears throat> so a special report, there's no action that's going to be taken by this commission. Um, these tend to be, in my experience, good things. Um, it's sort of an extra step in the process for us to have input, for the community to have input, and it's uh, uh, to give feedback, to give ideas, to give concerns, whatever those may be, but it's um, generally, we view this as a very good uh, thing. Um, as usual, I'm going to ask that this um, be done in a respectful and civil way. I'd like all of us to treat each other the way we'd want to be treated um, if we had something before this body. Um, and, uh, and I think it just reflects well on the community and who we are. So um, that's what we're going to require. Um, I think um, we're going to gather a lot of information. We're going to ask a lot of questions. And then there'll be a time for um, public comment. And during the public comment, we'll ask you to step up to the microphone that's there uh, in the middle of the room. Give us your name. Give us your address. And then uh, make your comment. A lot of times we'll limit comments to three minutes because we want to make sure everybody has an equal opportunity um, to provide comments and we don't have filibusters going on for you know an hour with one person speaking. Um, so we'll try to uh, we'll try to keep the comments to a, to that time time frame if we can. Um, so with that, I want to go ahead and uh, begin the special report if we could, Ms. Matthias. Thank you. Appreciate that. I don't often get that much of an introduction from you. I, <laughs> I, I like that because you said a few things that I'm going to also reiterate. Um, so Laura Matthias, Bureau of Development Review, and again, this is a special report in front of you. It, uh, the project uh, proposal is a sheets, which is at the corner of Sullivan Road and Maryland Route 140. The county file number is S21-0004. Um, and that 21 indicates the year which we started the plan process. So I'll speak to the history of that and, and why we are sitting here in 2023 with a special report. But again, so special report, you are more than familiar with special reports. In fact, just last month, we had three in front of you. Um, those were different than this in that, as you just said, there, there's no action being taken today by you. Their staff is not requesting an action. There's no action. Um, last month, we had a few modifications to previously approved plans in those special reports. So that did require, that was a different scenario. This is not that scenario. So we are here today at the request of the developer for discussion at a public meeting. So that is exactly, thank you for that introduction again. So. The existing conditions, you'll see the site is here. As I said, it's the northwest quadrant of Sullivan and 140. And it is red. And the red color on here is designating a C2 zoning district, so commercial. Okay. This is, they are proposing a sheets here, a convenience store, fueling stations. That is a principal permitted use in the commercial zoning district. Hey, Laura, before we yes. get too far, could I just sure. ask that we get an introduction of everybody who's sitting up here? We could do that. Would you like to introduce yourself by name, please? <laughs> sure. Thank uh, you. I'll, I'll do the introductions for the Sheets uh, team. Uh, my name is John McGuire. I'm the attorney for Sheets, which is the applicant. To my immediate right is Gary Kilfeather. He is the Sheets project manager. And to Gary's right is Bruce DeAnthony. Uh, Bruce is, uh, you'll see the, uh, the owner listed as Pat Amy LLC. That's Bruce's family company, and Bruce is the spokesman for the family. Uh, also uh, behind me is Kyle Smith, who is Sheets' senior real estate market manager. Um, Tony Federero, who is Sheets' senior real estate site selector, next to Kyle. Um, Valak Zarsky, who is the private engineering consultant on the project with Baltimore Land Design Group. Uh, Mark Keeley, uh, who is uh, with 
who is a traffic consultant, and Kyle Schmidt, who is also a Schmidt, I'm sorry, a traffic consultant with Traffic Concepts. And uh, I know you'll be anxious to get to Kyle and, and Mark uh, after I give you some mm -hmm. overview. So uh, I think that's everybody. Uh, Excellent. Thank yeah. you. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just thought it'd be useful no to know who everybody is. And you we remember all that? <laughs> well, I wrote it down. <laughs> you wrote it right. down. We'll see. But welcome to everybody. Thank you. Thank Very you. good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So we're going to zoom into the site. All right. So the site itself is comprised of three separate parcels right now. So the address points being 8, 10, and 14 Sullivan Road. Um, each parcel was developed independently, and this goes back 1979 through 1987. We did have plans come through. We have a history of those for these um, specific three parcels and the development of those. So it's, it's been a while. It's been a few. Um, the most uh, recent use, the Caples Car Care is there, where there was an approved Jeep dealership. Uh, there was a plans for a High's Dairy Store. They were approved in 1979. That's where the most recently the Vocelli's Pizza is. Um, I'm pointing with my finger. That's really helpful. Here, right here. I also learned a new mouse trick today. Ta-da! Look at that. It's fun. Okay, the pizza. Um, and this was Caples Car Care. And this was approved as an Exxon station, fueling station and convenience store, and that was approved in 1987. The most um, recent use, there was a series of small businesses that were on the site. Currently, all the businesses are closed and the lot is being used for vehicle storage. That's, my, that's what we've seen. Used car, yeah. Okay. So adjoining, I'm going to go back one slide to the zoning. So adjoining the property on the north, across Sullivan Road on the north side of Han, we have our 10,000, and these are built with single family residences. This is the entire area I'm referring to on the north side of Han. Um, to the west, we have the community pond. And that's in the conservation zoning district. Across Sullivan Road on the south side of Han Road, the C2 zone property has the Roy, uh, Roy Rogers, if you're familiar at all with this area. Um, yeah, that's a fast food restaurant. And then across 140 on the south, within the city of Westminster's jurisdiction, we have the Plum Cl Crazy Diner is directly across on the south side. Okay, so that's just to familiarize you with that intersection, that area, if you don't travel it that often. So a site development plan for the subject property was submitted to the county in June of 2021. Again, so that explains the county file number being an S21. So we did receive a submittal, a technical plan submittal in June of 2021. That did move forward to the technical review committee, which is our standard process in July of 2021. There have been no technical plans submitted since that June 2021 plan submittal. Okay, so staff, technical staff has not seen and reviewed this in the interim. So prior to this meeting, we did receive, they submitted a single sheet um, schematic design drawing was submitted in February prior to this meeting. And that was to, for comments, from technical agencies to the greatest extent that they could offer comments. So this schematic is a good place to pause. It does depict what the, the developer is proposing. So the proposal is to consolidate the three parcels, demolish the existing structures, and develop the subject parcel as a single site with a Sheets convenience store and fueling stations. And the store at this point is uh, 4,906 square feet. Also proposed is an access from Sullivan Road. Again, I'm going to right here. And a second access from Maryland 140.
The building itself, you'll see, is situated towards the northernmost property line. It, they have annotated that it's 15.2 feet from that northern residential property. Um, and the access drive aisle, when you get, when you come into the site, that is given as a 10 foot dimension from the access drive to the property line. In between the northern property line and the building and the parking lot, you'll also find that they are proposing a retaining wall. Oop. I apologize. I'm trying to get fancy with my mouse, and I got too fancy. So the retaining wall is shown here in that space, and it wraps down. Um, required parking for the site based on the use totals 25 stalls and they have shown 36 on site. And there are our dumpsters shown on the west side of the site here, <coughs> as well as an unloading zone proposed here at the drive aisle near the fueling stations. So that's a general overview of what the current plan proposal looks like. Um, we did just to insert here it's a perfect place to talk about we did send out notification to the neighborhood of this public meeting and you've seen the emails they came to you I was copied so we had about 17 emails and a handful of phone calls that also came in with many comments which you've read um, but just to reiterate this is a, a lot of those comments were in regards to the use and what is proposed there. And just to reiterate that this is a principal permitted use in this zoning district. So it is permitted as long as they meet all of the technical requirements. And the Planning Commission will be the final approval authority once we get there. So I'd like to take a few minutes when the staff did take a look at this plan I want to go over the comments that pertain specifically to site layout or may potentially impact the layout of the site or the access points, um, which maybe uh, we don't know what those changes would look like at this point in time, right? As we work through the plan review process that evolves. So our roads department in looking at it did say the Bureau of Roads does have concern with the heavy traffic congestion that may occur at Hahn and Sullivan as people enter and exit the site, right? So we're talking about along Sullivan Road. Here we have the intersection with Hahn. And here we also have an access point for the Roy Rogers, right? And the proposed entrance for the site is here. It's as far north on Sullivan Road as they can go on their property, but there is concern from roads when they took a look at that. Uh, Parks and Recreation had major safety concerns with the proximity of the Baltimore Boulevard ingress and egress and the park entrance road. Um, currently, the site does have an entrance off of 140. It's, it's further towards Sullivan Road. It's being relocated closer to the community pond entrance and this is the, the community pond entrance here. So their concern was that proximity. Our landscaping review, in the initial plan that we received back in 2021, there was also a um, variance request for the landscaping. And so landscaping review in reviewing this did note that, and I'm gonna read this verbatim, his, his words, the developer applied for a variance to reduce the width of the Class C screen required between the project and the existing residential property to the north. The variance request was disapproved by Chris Hine, Director, Department of Land and Resource Management, on May 6, 2022. In his disapproval letter, Mr. Hine recommended that the developer either coordinate with the adjacent property owner to utilize the exception documented in one, chapter 158.05H or reconfigure the site to meet the code requirements. The submittal did not incorporate either of those recommendations. So we don't know what that will look like or where that's going to address the code, the manual, landscape manual. Um, and then development reviewed in looking at it did I did an overall I did review it I did an overall assessment of the site again 
things that may impact the overall layout of the site. Um, the access on 140 has been relocated since the initial plan review in July 2021. It's recognized that SHA did require a minimum corner clearance of 200 feet from the radius return of Sullivan Road and Maryland 140 intersection. However, the access has moved more than 200 feet from that intersection and closer to the entrance of the community pond. As it was stated in 2021, development review fully supports and encourages discussion and collaboration between the county and the developer to pursue a mutually beneficial vehicular connection between the development site and the community pond, providing a safer entrance to the pond, community pond and enhanced accessibility to the sheets. So it was an initial comment. There was a lot of discussion with the county, the developer, as to could there be a, a solution that benefits both. Um, the north property line, again, comments from development review. The north property line, which is shared with a residential zoned and built property, is depicted with a 10-foot dimension from the property line to the edge of paving. Within that 10 feet, a retaining wall is proposed. To construct that, will the limits of disturbance extend onto the adjoining property? Question. To maintain the retaining wall, will a maintenance easement be need to be established on the adjoining property? Question. So all questions that we are posing that will hopefully lead in developing <clears throat> the plan. How will the required landscaping requirements at the northern property line be addressed? Will the edge of paving need to be relocated? Will the building need to be relocated? Consider how the site and the building lighting will affect adjacent residentially zoned and built properties. Of course, we will see a photometric plan eventually. This is not, we don't have that with this design. Um, is the site redesign necessary to shield adjoining residential properties from parking, building, or access drive lights? And consider how headlight trespass will affect adjacent residentially zoned and built properties to the north. Is site redesign necessary to shield adjoining residential properties from headlights? So that comment came from, as you can see, the, the drive aisle here. We're coming straight towards this residence here without knowing the height of the retaining wall or the landscaping that'll be going in, considering that. How will that affect the design of the site? And lastly, engineering review. So engineering review's comments are quoted directly in here. And they note that as of this date, there are still concerns with the content and recommendations within the traffic impact study. As stated in the original scoping letter for the traffic impact study, the queuing analysis shall utilize the State Highway Administration's 95% probability methodology to determine if adequate storage length is available. For the exhibit in the traffic impact study, the 95% queue blocks the entrance to sheets and presents a safety concern. This quantitative issue coupled with existing conditions at the Sullivan Road intersection presents a situation where we can't support the proposed design. So going back to, this is a 2021 project. They did submit a traffic impact study. They have been through multiple revisions to the traffic impact study. And the, the traffic impact study, you're very familiar with the contents. We were just in front of you last month or the month before, right? And we did an overview for you of what a traffic impact study is, when it's necessitated, what it's looking at, what the criteria, what comes out of it, and so this, the trip generations for this type of development are what necessitated the traffic impact study. That study was initially submitted in June of 2021. 2021, right when they started in with us. The traffic impact study narrative details existing conditions and impacts of the proposed development. So I want to walk you through take you on a drive, if you will, through this area and show you what that comment from engineering review looks like, if you would. So 
Not sure how familiar everybody is with this, uh, this intersection, but I'm going to walk you through it from a vehicular perspective, right? So Sullivan Road, of course, here, Maryland Route 140 here. So the green lanes are, I'm going straight. I'm heading west on 140, I'm going straight. Yellow is our turning lanes, or in the case of the Maryland 97 ramp, it's more of a merge lane, right? You're you're going onto a ramp lane. Um, and orange is an acceleration lane. So this is all existing conditions. So what you'll see is on Sullivan Road, you have a right turn lane, which proceeds into an acceleration lane. You also have, coming south on Sullivan Road, you have another lane, which is either a straight or turn, left turn lane. Okay. Heading westbound on 140, you have a, right before Sullivan Road, you have a lane that is for a right turn on the Sullivan Road. You have three straight through lanes, and you have an additional lane, which is for a left turn south on Sullivan Road, okay? Now, as you progress through that intersection, you have three straight lanes. You have that acceleration lane. And that acceleration lane from Sullivan, you'll see once it ends and you're merging into the rest of traffic, it puts you into a yellow turning lane. And that turning lane is marked, you can see the arrows here, is marked and that takes you to, you can turn into the community pond. You can think you're going on to 97 and turn into the community pond mm -hmm. for a visit. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can keep going. It's still a turn slash on ramp for Maryland 97 North. Okay. If you're coming off of Sullivan Road and you're in that acceleration lane and then you merge into the turn lane, you have to merge over again if you want to continue straight on 140. Right. So the two left for this left lanes are your straight lanes that then keep going. So it is an interesting scenario for those of you who haven't driven it, I encourage you to drive it, but it, it, is, it is what it is. That's the existing state of the traffic patterns in that area. From the data received, we have noted that that specific area has seen 33 accidents over a period of three years from the beginning of 2020 <laughs> to the end of 2022. Now we're going to take a look at the existing conditions plus background. And we reviewed this when we went over the traffic impact studies. That background lingo, that means things that are approved to be developed in this area, but they may not have already come to fruition, right? They may not be constructed, but they are approved and they are moving towards construction. So it takes into account the existing <coughs> condition as well as the background condition. And Levels of service, we also went over this in our traffic impact study reviews, and you'll be familiar with what that is. These are delays in seconds. So this is the existing condition at these intersections. We will find a couple of, that are currently failing. F, F is failing. Um, F for failing. And the entrances that exist right now onto the site, there are two on Sullivan Road and two on 140. And then you'll also see numbers. And the numbers are taken, they are taken from the actual counts, the traffic counts that were done with the traffic impact study. And these are the peak hour for the PM trips. So these are actual counts. So going Northbound on Sullivan, or on Sullivan Road, we have 386 vehicles. Coming off of Han Road, we have 44. Going on to Han Road, 101. We have some coming out of Roy Rogers. And then the Westminster Community Pond is seeing 19 in, 24 out, and 2,618 vehicles at that peak hour are traveling on 140 in the westbound direction. What is the time again for this? 
it's a one hour, it's the peak hour. So, and it was in the PM, those were the highest number of counts were the PM Thank you. versus AM. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the conditions would exist. Again, the proposed plan. And then we're going to look at the future conditions. So future plus improvements. Okay. So they are proposing some improvements right now along Sullivan Road. We go from the two, <coughs> we saw that right turn lane, and then we saw the through left lane. They are proposing to also add a right left turn, dedicated left turn lane in here as well. Okay. So if you look at the levels of service, not a significant change, and actually they're not making anything worse. So they don't have to mitigate. Level of service is acceptable. So <coughs> per the traffic study, level of service is acceptable. If they're making the scenario worse, they, have, they would have to mitigate for just their worsening <laughs> of the condition, the exacerbation of that condition. Um, so then you'll see we also are looking at numbers. So some of the numbers look the same, Roy Rogers, Hunt Road. Um, the entrance we have from the traffic impact study, we have 10, um, 10 vehicles coming in, 63 going out onto Sullivan Road. And this is, again, utilizing the site during peak PM, peak hours. And then at this entrance, we have 99 coming out and 119 <coughs> coming in. Okay, so that's, that's at the numbers that are anticipated that the development would add to that area intersection. Okay. I'm sorry, Laura, can I get yes. you to go back there? Uh huh. Can you, can you give me that one more time? How many? Cars are coming in to the entrance on Sullivan. Ten. So it's showing ten. This is peak hour, right? right? This is right. simply the peak hour. So ten coming in, and sixty-three exiting. Right, and the other entrance, it, it's ninety-nine and one nineteen. Correct. So I mean, doesn't that basically mean we got a bunch of people who aren't leaving? It's like Hotel California. <laughs> Maybe they stay beyond the peak hour. Maybe they stay for a while. We do have people here from uh, that. We have our engineering review specialist, reviewer, and we have people from DPW that could go more into where do the rest of the people, you, they could answer that question better okay. than I could. Okay? Okay. Working. All right, so levels of service, not, not an issue. Um, although, as engineering review did comment, the 95% cube blocks the entrance of sheets. So we wanted to show that graphically what that looks like and walk you through that and the case scenarios here. So this is the queue. The queue in the AM is worse. So this is what the queue looks like in the morning, okay? So the numbers that the traffic impact studies show is that we would have 223 northbound going straight on Sullivan Road, and 21 people that are coming in that northbound direction are turning into the site. So these gray cars, right, are heading north. And you'll see the orange cars have we've reached a point with that queuing, the stacking, the queuing, that has blocked a portion or all of that entrance point. So we do also have, so all of these cars are waiting to either go straight or turn left. Here we have the right, dedicated right lane for turning onto 140, although that lane starts here. So if you're back here on Sullivan Road, you can't quite get to that yet unless people are nice enough to let you in. There are interesting scenarios, right, where maybe you're coming out of Han Road and you are also trying to make a left onto Sullivan. Will people let you in? Will they not? How long are you waiting? I don't know. 
Um, but it is a scenario where Han Road also is, is blocked in some sense. So the site entrance ends up being blocked, Han Road ends up being blocked, and we are challenged to, although they have provided a lane on the shoulder where you can pass these cars, if you're all the way back here towards 140, you're not yet in a scenario where you can scoot around the left turning vehicles. So you'll see if you walk yourself through various scenarios of where I'm coming from and where I'm going, it's greatly challenged. So the comment from an engineering review is specifically that we can't yet support the design. So the county, while this, the State Highway Administration also reviewed the traffic impact study, because Sullivan Road, County Road, 140, State Highway. So State Highway and the county reviewed the traffic impact study. The State Highway Administration did concur with the study. They are looking at 140. They concurred with the study and approved it on August 18th of 2022. In review of the plan, they also determined that the proposed access point on 140 is acceptable to them. The county, however, does not yet find that the proposed mitigation adequately alleviates the development's traffic impacts. So, before I summarize and conclude my report, I do want to offer the developer, John said he did have um, a, a report to share with you. So I want to offer the developer and the engineer. They may want to introduce themselves again, remind you their names, and speak to their project. And then we will come back. I will summarize, wrap everything up for you, and then we can move to public comment if you would. All right. Mr. Okay. Tice, thank you. Mr. McGuire. Yes, thank you. I do have uh, some overview comments because I think there's more than just what you've seen that, that, that creates part of the context for why we're here. Uh, but getting to why we're here is that we've reached an impasse on the traffic impact study, as you've heard. Uh, Sheets has done. Uh, I think to back up a little bit, I think all the raw data, the, the assumptions, the things that uh, the foundational information that goes into the traffic study, I don't think we have any, any uh, difference of opinion about that anymore. There, were, there was some of that back and forth that happened early in the discussions. Um, but where we are now is that the staff will not approve the traffic study, and in particular, not so much the study portion but as part of the study under the, under the guidelines, the traffic mitigation plan is, actually becomes part of the study itself, and that's where we were hung up. Uh, Sheets has provided uh, quite a bit of mitigation. You'll hear more about that, but they've done the best they can do with the geometry that they have out there. Um, and you can see it plainly that with the Roy Rogers, with the uh, residences to the north, there's just only so much land to work with, and yet what they've done is created two additional lanes, and what you'll hear, uh, and, and actually, I'll go to what's on the screen right now, because that's the, you know, that's the worst case queuing, and what our uh, traffic consultants will demonstrate is that, really, that only occurs for about 10 to 15 seconds at the end of a cycle, which is 180 seconds long. So uh, it, it may occur, statistically, it may occur once or twice during that peak hour, uh, but for the most part, it's going to be open and traffic is going to trickle in over that 180 seconds, and that once or twice in an hour, you may, that intersection may well be blocked for, um, for 10 or 15 seconds. And then you know, if it boils down to that being the question, the question is, is that a reason to deny the entire uh, uh, mitigation plan when it does so much positive for uh, for the for the, the traffic patterns and the traffic flow, um, but kind of getting back into the progression of things, um, 
there has been a, a, a tremendous amount of effort to satisfy these demands and, and there's just nowhere else to go. Um, and yet it doesn't seem to make sense to sort of throw out the plan uh, when there is so much improvement that's being offered at the expense of sheets. Um, the, seems like the issue is now narrowed down mainly to that queuing that you're seeing. And again, I think our traffic experts uh, will show you that there's really nothing left that sheets can do, and, and which, is, which is really essentially the reason that we're here. It's all about traffic. Uh, if we can't design, uh, we can't know that this design is going to work, um, then the rest of the plan doesn't work. We don't know how to design it. Uh, and you know, the estimates are that it could cost fifty to hundred thousand dollars to get a concept plan, you know, refiled because it is going to have to be refiled due to some of these additional mitigation measures, and to get it back to the planning commission. It's got a whole process and many months to go through to get it there, and. Uh, that, that's not a fair thing to ask of the developer, but it would be fair if the Planning Commission uh, sends a signal that this traffic mitigation plan works. If the signal is it doesn't work, there's nowhere else for sheets to go. So we're, we're kind of, we're out of luck and out of business. Um, so w what I think what's happening here is that the staff demand has made sort of the perfect the enemy of the good, and, and it's a very good traffic mitigation plan. Uh, so the ask is um, to look at the traffic impact study guidelines, uh, which you're familiar with, um, and, and to understand that the, the traffic mitigation plan really is squarely in the province of the Planning Commission. Uh, when you look at the guidelines, the staff makes recommendations, but the Planning Commission makes the final decision. And I think part of that is because the Planning Commission, unlike the technical staff, can sort of look at the bigger picture, you know, look at the, the overview of what's happening and what the benefits are to the public uh, and, and what the potential is for improvement uh, to, a, to a, a prominent intersection. Uh, and, 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 and that's one of the things that, that I want to speak a little bit more about, the overall context. The existing conditions, well, it's the, I mean, when you look at what's there now, there are entrances two or three entrances and the ent entrance of the Exxon is just almost like you can pull in and out wherever you want. Um, so just think about what the situation is now. First off, the queuing uh, goes back uh, based on the study some 400 feet. This is showing you I think about 300 feet of queuing, uh, you know, based on the traffic, assuming the traffic mitigation plan is put into place. So the cars back up, and if anybody drives by there, I mean, it doesn't take a traffic engineer to see there's only one lane to turn left. And that's where everybody's going in the morning, which is where the, the main issue is here. Um, and the traffic backs up well beyond this. So everybody's blocked. Uh, so yes, there's a potential statistical possibility of blocking after the mitigation is constructed, but it's much better <laughs> than having cars back up you know, 400, 450 feet, which happens every morning. And I can understand why the public's frustrated with that. But, but what Sheets has to offer is to improve the condition uh, for itself, but also for the traveling public, basically. These are public roads. And they're using every amount of right-of-way available. So they're expanding to the extent of the right-of-way and to the extent of their property. and. Mr. DeAnthony is losing at least three and a half feet of his property along the entire frontage of Sullivan Road to widen it enough to kind of to make it work. And it, it, it's a tight squeeze as it is because you've got a sidewalk uh, that goes along the road. You've got maintenance easement that the county needs to maintain its road. You've got setbacks to parking. So there's a, a lot of other things that are going on. And, uh, and they will be... Uh, they will be looked at and the engineering team at Sheets feels that they can work with you know some of the things that Laura raised like lighting and and retaining wall and grading uh, that's really not what we're here about today I mean I, I understand there are going to be concerns if we can get over the hurdle of the of the traffic mitigation plan um, but but Sheets is a, has got a pretty uh, sophisticated 
knowledgeable, experienced team that's looked at that and they feel they can address those things. For example, the landscape question with the neighbor and the need to get uh, you know adjoining property approval. We've approached the neighbor. We've gotten a letter from the neighbor. Uh, of course, a lot of that's conditional because the plans aren't final, but the neighbor is has been cooperative. So that's something that we've moved towards just to try to get uh, you know a better sense for the feasibility. I must say it's been very difficult getting to the planning commission with this issue. I, I the staff resisted um, for quite a while to get us here, and I do appreciate that you're you're willing to listen. Um, because I think you're, you're getting the picture as to why this is so important to the to the project and, and essential you know to the project um, sheets of course understands that um, if we can get the green light on the mit traffic mitigation plan that they've got to go back to the concept plan stage redesign move it through the system so there's no misunderstanding on that um, but everything flows, that will flow from, from the approval of the traffic mitigation plan. So, and, and notwithstanding you know, the opening statements, Mr. Chairman, uh, we would ask, based on the fact that the traffic guidelines give the Planning Commission the exclusive authority to answer questions, resolve questions about the traffic mitigation plan, that, that the Planning Commission approve the traffic impact study with the mitigation uh, we understand that's probably not where you're headed based on your comments but we do think that the next best thing would be to give the type of conditional or provisional approval that would uh, give sheets the confidence to move forward to make the expenditure and the time to make the plan work uh, you know, the most disappointing thing would be if you feel that the traffic mitigation plan is a good one, but you're not willing to really give us any sense for, uh, for whether it's provable at some point, and, and that's really what we need. Um, as far as the, you know, the property itself and the opportunity to upgrade the intersection, I think that's clear from what you've seen. It's kind of gotten beat up over the years. It's separated into three uses. If this doesn't happen or if somebody similar to Sheets doesn't come in and redevelop it, it's gonna stay the way it is. It's gonna have all these dangerous uh, entrances that it has now. Um, the mitigation is not, is not going to occur and it's gonna look the way it looks now. And who knows who the individual smaller tenants would be. I mean, this is an opportunity to, to um, you know, it's an adaptive and a productive reuse of that property at a prominent intersection. Um, it's going to have, you know, brand new paving, landscaping. Uh, the entrances are going to work uh, as best they can under the situation. It's going to be designed for uh, modern stormwater management, you know, function. So it's there's a lot of positive to it. Uh, Sheets, of course, I think is pretty well known in the community. Uh, they have stores already in the eastern part of Westminster and Tawnytown, Manchester. They're successful, capable company, so a good developer that can do what they say and they're willing to do the right thing. Uh, they like this location or they wouldn't have stuck with it this long. That's probably obvious. Um, they're in the C2 zone where this is a principal permitted use. It was planned for this. And interestingly, uh, as you saw from the, uh, the exhibit before, the C2 zone is only about 250, 270 feet deep in this area, and then it transitions into residential. So this is not a situation where you're going to be building and expanding a big commercial development. It's kind of the, it's sort of an island in itself on that side of, of 140. Um, in addition to closing the, the you know, poorly designed entrances, um, it, you're going to add the two lanes going in either direction. Uh, it's going to, you'll, you'll hear from the, uh, from the consultants that it will create a net reduction in the queuing before and after. And again, going back to the guidelines, uh, there are two uh, places in the guidelines that I'd just like to, you know, without belaboring this, uh, the guidelines in section 5.1.17, uh, subsection E, 
if the existing level of service is inadequate or the existing plus background growth causes an inadequate, inadequate level of service, then the developer will be required to mitigate only the traffic to be generated by the proposed project. So uh, I think what we're talking about there, I mean, the, the rationale behind that is that the developer can't be made to solve all the problems at a major intersection where traffic's coming from you know, places way well beyond its control um, and, and that there's recognition of that. So, so what does it mean in simple terms? I, I think it means that you have to make the intersection equal or better than when it was when you showed up. And what you'll hear is going to be much better, and especially on this queuing issue, which seems to be, you know, the main focus. Uh, I also want to mention that um, this property is subject to an annexation agreement with the city of Westminster. Um, she entered into a lease with Mr. DeAnthony back in February 2020. Uh, the quick history is that uh, they intended to develop it strictly within the county, which is what they're doing but they discovered that the city would not uh, provide water, public water and sewer without annexation. That's just the city policy. It's become well known. Um, the city strongly uh, supported the redevelopment, but um, the development was occurring within the county, so the city agreed to provide the water, the public water and sewer, uh, assuming that the project would get approved uh, and construction began, would begin, then the, uh, the developer has agreed to annex into the city. Uh, that was uh, begun with a discussion before the city's Economic Development Commission. They recommended uh, to negotiate an, an annexation agreement, recognizing an opportunity to upgrade that intersection, uh, which they don't care for at, at the moment, uh, you know, the way it looks and the way it functions. Uh, the annexation agreement was negotiated, signed by the city on July 12th of 2021. So some of this was going on while, um, while the plan was, was sitting here at the county, um, the original plan. Uh, and that annexation agreement is premised in, in a recital that says the city supports the development of the property with a convenience store and a gas station. And you've got some comments that sort of echo that that were given by the city recently as part of this special report. Uh, and the city has uh, expressed its continued support, you know, for the project. So we think that's that's relevant. Um, it doesn't it doesn't bind you. This is a county project at the moment, but it is relevant that it will be will be in the city, and the city supports it. Um, the the other part of the um, the guidelines that I think are relevant. Uh, Section 5.1.19, subsection H, recommendations for improvement of conditions shall be, shall be sensitive to the following. And it, it lists a number of things, but one of those things is that the sum of improvements are proportional to the projected impact. And I, I think it's not much of a stretch to know that when these were adopted, the Supreme Court of the United States was recognizing that there were limits to what you could take from a developer, that the, the taking, the exactions from the developer have to be, in the words they use, are roughly proportionate to the impact of the development. So again, we've got a development, and, 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 and that's sort of part of the intent of your guidelines. So I, I don't know that you can take that language to say, you know, you win or you lose, but it, it should be part of your consideration. Uh, in this, and we've got a, a traffic mitigation plan that makes conditions better. Uh, so, how much more, you know, would it be reasonable to try to take? And in this situation, there's nothing more to take. There's no, there's nothing more sheets can get. There's nowhere else to go to make this work. I, I would add that the store that's planned here is the smallest of the sheets prototypical stores. So, if the thought is make a small store, it, it just it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work economically and it doesn't fit into their, their models. Um, as far as uh, applying the criteria in the guidelines, uh, the overall, we ask you not uh, lose sight of the fact that the overall level of service of the intersection is a level C. It's, it's adequate. But what the staff has done is started to look at individual traffic movements 
and so that's where they they raise uh, some difficulty I would also add that um, you have a drawing in the packet from the letter of December 20th that was done by traffic concepts it's in the pocket part that shows the old State Highway Administration plat. I don't want to dwell on that, but it appears as though the, the, the Hawn Road intersection, this whole intersection was redesigned to accommodate 140 as a bypass for Westminster. So the road network was different than this. Uh, again, it, it's not perfect. Hawn Road being that close to the intersection, it is what it is, as Laura said. Um, but it was a design that was, was done by State Highway Administration uh, many many years ago uh, and it's what we have to work with however the the traffic from Han Road will also benefit from the reduction in the queuing uh, and it will also get a right turn lane to sort of escape if they want to go to the north uh, which is not there right now there's one lane and uh, so it, it will be of some benefit to Han Road as well it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be an improvement over existing conditions which I which I really think is the test uh, look, I think what you have here is a small site that's making an outsized contribution to the overall improvement of traffic. And I'm, I'm hoping that you're really recognizing that. And because of that, we need some help from the Planning Commission to give us the sort of the green light uh, to tell us that, that, you know, our traffic mitigation plan will work. Um, and I, I will also mention something that I mentioned to you all a couple months ago when I, when I spoke, and that is that under uh, the county code chapter 156.03b uh, commercial developments are exempt from concurrency management adequacy testing altogether so i'm not suggesting that we don't need you know traffic impact studies because you all need guidance and the staff needs guidance as to the best design available but i am suggesting that because of that you know there was a reason for that a lot of the Carroll County development is on state highways which the county doesn't control the state has its own uh, blessed uh, slow deliberate way of getting around to our intersections but the county can't control it so, so, so rather than retard development in the county indefinitely uh, the, the county exempted this from the testing not from the study of the design you need you need that so it's not what i'm suggesting but the rationale is an economic development rationale and the rationale that the state highway administration reg regulates this so they tr they review the traffic studies and in this case it's a state highway in, uh, intersection sullivan road maryland 140 state highway has looked at all this and the state highway has determined that it's this the traffic study is acceptable um, and that would also apply even to the community pond entrance, which is another imperfect situation that <coughs> we didn't cause, others didn't cause, it just is what it is. Um, but it, it was looked at, it, it, it doesn't work, but again, it's the state, it's on the state highway. So the state highway was certainly aware of the community pond entrance and of what the options were to move the, the sheets entrance, and this is what they approved, and I think that's that's the approval that would stand uh, so with that um, and I apologize for I, I, I thank you for your indulgence I apologize for taking so long but I think the context is important I'd like to call on uh, Mark Keeley Mark has a master's in transportation planning he's with traffic concepts I introduced him earlier he has extensive many years of experience as a transportation planner works on these types of issues um, really all over the state so mark <coughs> morning um, my name is mark keely i'm a project manager with traffic concepts um, i've been in this business for over 30 years and i've been with traffic concepts for almost 20 years um, so we conducted the traffic impact study uh, the first study was submitted july 14th 2022 um, and then it was revised September 16th, 2022. The revisions were done um, to include the Royal Farms, I mean the uh, Roy Rogers access, and then to um, other housekeeping measures to um, correct 
lane widths. Um, the state highway, as we heard, um, reviewed the entire study, not just the access points to Maryland 140. Um, they reviewed the study. We also, in addition to the traffic study, we did a synchro analysis. That's a model, a traffic model that simulates traffic. Um, and we did that along uh, Sullivan Road and 140 um, to really to, to highlight what the uh, traffic mitigation um, provides in terms of improvements. And this, so the state approved the entire traffic study. They approved the uh, um, access to Maryland 140 and also um, the trip generation and everything that goes into the study. So uh, as you know, the uh, traffic impact study uh, you've heard this many times, includes three components, existing background and future. The existing um, is a, it's a commercial site and it has over 6,000 square feet of, of, of building floor area. Um, it includes a restaurant, the pizza shop, um, auto repair, and an Exxon gas station. Um, so this, this project is a commercial redevelopment that's going to remove those buildings, improve the site as we heard, and, and uh, a Sheets gas station is going to be constructed with a convenience store. Um, so the existing counts were conducted at, at Sullivan Road at Maryland 140, Engler at Maryland 140, Hahn at Sullivan, and the Roy Rogers, as I said, at Sullivan. Uh, so that creates the existing traffic additions, and then we analyze the intersections at that point. The background included one, one development, Windy Hill, which is 83 single family units, and it also included a growth rate um, of 0.5%, and that growth rate was provided by the State Highway Administration. The future traffic condition, it'll create a, a convenience store of 4,959 square feet with uh, <coughs> gasoline pumps. I believe there's, there's uh, five pumps so 10 fueling positions. Um, and I think that's one less pump than it exists today. Um, so the site, as we heard, and I'm not gonna elaborate too much, that the site access points currently are two access points onto Maryland 140. And then it's, it's essentially, it's wide open along Sullivan Road. And we're gonna can combine those access points, as we heard, Put, push them at the furthest most points of the project away from uh, Sullivan at Maryland 140. So we'll, a right in, right out to uh, Maryland 140 and a full movement to um, Sullivan Road. Um, the traffic mitigation, uh, as, as my colleague Kyle Schmidt is gonna um, elaborate in more detail, provides capacity along Sullivan Road. That capacity helps with intersection delays and also queuing. And this exhibit, uh, I think this is a great exhibit. It, I think it actually highlights um, the improvements that Sheets is gonna provide. Because if you can imagine, well, let, let me back up. So this, this provides the right turn lane, the th a through left, and a left turn lane. It also shows um, a bypass lane which allows traffic to turn. If you want to make a left end to the site from Sullivan Road, um, you don't block the through traffic because we provide a bypass. And then as we also heard, if you're on, on Han Road with that bypass, if you want to turn right, you can, you can get by the traffic. So if you, if you look at the cars stacked on this exhibit, if you can imagine the existing traffic condition with a right turn and then a shared through left with that same traffic that's going to back up much further along Sullivan Road. So I think that this greatly illustrates the fact that we mitigate our impact and as you just heard APFO studies what is what is incumbent upon the developer is to to impact his traffic um, which which you're going to hear from Kyle in greater detail does um, in terms of, of the queuing. And I think this, this, the pushback from the county at this point is, is primarily the vehicle queuing because uh, this, this exhibit shows two vehicles stopped at the, at the site access on Sullivan Road. The synchro model shows that this 
traffic clears out which e which with each cycle um, length so it, it doesn't it's not double cycling you're not sitting there through one cycle and the traffic is continuing to stack up um, and again with with the with the two left turn lanes we'll have a through left and a, and a left that provides additional capacity to help that traffic clear out and as you heard from Ms. Matthias this is not a level of service issue. The Sullivan Road, Maryland 140 level of service essentially remains the same. The overall level of service, when you compare it to background, and, that, and that's how we mitigate our traffic. We, we compare future to background and then future with improvements to background. So in the AM, the background overall level of service at Maryland 140 at Sullivan Avenue is 24.7 seconds. That's a C. Under future with the improvements, it's 24.9 seconds. Um, and that's the case with the, the PM and Saturday. For the PM background, Sullivan Road under background is 25.4 seconds of delay. That's a C. And it's 29.1 seconds of delay under future with uh, the improvements. And then Saturday, it's 13.5 seconds under background, which is a B-level service, and it's 15 seconds, which is a B-level service under future. So I think everybody agrees to this is not a, a level of service capacity issue. <coughs> and part of the reason for that is that the sheet store is, it's, it's not, it's not a, traffic generator where you're going home visiting the store and then going back home or from work to the store and going back home it's it's a pass by use meaning it captures traffic that's already along Sullivan Road or primarily on Maryland 140 it cap captures that existing traffic into the site and then it leaves so ITE, which is how we generate traffic for, for uses, says that a convenience store with pumps has a 76% pass-by rate. So we're not, we're not bringing new trips to this area where Sheets wants to be here because of the existing traffic that's already out there. They capture that traffic, bring it to their site, and it leaves. And again, I think we you've heard that we've we've combined the access points we improved access for these for these pass by trips that we're we're bringing to the store we improve um the queuing and also we maintain levels of service delay at the study intersections so that's just a brief overview again the state highway approved the study they looked at our synchro analysis. They approved the analysis. And I'm going to let Kyle Schmid, he's our chief design engineer. And he, he designed the improvements, um, the road improvements. The signal has, is going to be redesigned. So um, Kyle, with that. Yes. All right. Thanks, Mark. Um, <coughs> Laura, is there any way to get the site plan up that um, Absolutely. Long line design group. Did. There we go. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kyle Schmid. Uh, as Mark said, I am the lead design engineer at Traffic Concepts. Um, I've been employed at Traffic Concepts for 15 years now. I have a civil engineering degree from the University of Delaware. I've been a certified professional engineer for over 11 years and a certified professional traffic operations engineer for over seven years. Um, so the first uh, uh, site access location I want to talk about is the access along 140 that's up on the screen now. So I know the agency had concerns regarding the proposed site access location in relation to the park per the special report. So this, this Maryland 140 is a, is a state highway maintained roadway and they have their own design guidelines for our site access point. So SHA required us to have a 200 foot offset from basically where the, the curve around Sullivan Road ties in the tangent section on 140. And we're currently showing about 230 feet. So it's just, it's not significantly over that 200 foot minimum requirement that the state requires. So 
we are re we realize that the park is right there, but it's we're required to meet that 200 foot offset per state guidelines on the state roadway. Um, so there are two existing access locations here um, that do not meet state design guidelines. So we're improving the access point from where it is today and meeting state guidelines for that. Um, so one of the reasons the state highway requires this 200 foot offset is it's something called a weave, a weave analysis and a weave issue. So when you have Sullivan Road traffic heading southbound, turning right, they have to merge onto Maryland 140. And, you know, right in this corridor, you got, you know, Maryland 31, Maryland 140, Maryland 97, you know, with you have to be aligned in the right lane. And there's a lot of weaving that occurs from that right turn on Sullivan Road. So the the bigger distance you have for these access points, um, it just allows um, an easier weave condition. And also, if you're heading um, westbound on Maryland 140 and you want to turn right into Sheets, you now have that extra, you know, say 100 feet or 150 feet from where it is today that have to negotiate with that right turn coming off Sullivan Road. So there's a bigger distance for the weave, and that's why the state highway puts these minimum offsets in place. Um, as far as the shared access point, I know we touched on for the park and the sheets. I mean, from a traffic engineering standpoint, I feel like that would be very confusing for drivers to have a shared commercial access to a, a county park at one access and I think there'd be confusion for somebody thinking they were turning into a commercial access when they want to go to a park or vice versa and I think it's best to separate the accesses like we have shown and I agree that it's you know there's a lot of wayfinding and guide signs in place here with these interstates that, that have to be aligned with the lanes but I think it's simple. There's no ground mounted signs or anything to point to the park right now. And, you know, it's people, you know, if you're going along a high speed road like 140 and you, you're aligned in the, um, I believe the lane drop is for, I think it's 31 or is it 97? But whatever, whatever uh, highway is directly in the line that shares the right term in the parks, so Maryland 97. Um, you want to be clear to drivers on, you know, to make sure they're in the right lane, know where access points are, know where parks are. So I think a, gr a simple ground mounted sign would solve that issue. I think that consolidating the access points would be very confusing for people. Um, um, there's minimal right turning volumes in the park. There's 14 a.m. trips, 19 p.m. trips. Um, you know, this whole corridor, there's, there's a lot of shared access points <laughs> up and down. This is characteristic of this entire corridor <coughs> and yeah I mean essentially this this site access point you know it works for a sheets layout but it also is a requirement we have to meet as from traffic engineering standpoint to meet state highway guidelines so we're only about 30 feet more than that 200 foot threshold that we have to have so we're just trying to follow state guidelines on the state road and we realize that you know, there are some challenges with this proximity of the park, but we're kind of constrained to what we have to work with here. So, um, okay. So the next uh, kind of, I guess, exhibit I want to discuss is our concept plan on Sullivan Road and the improvements that we're doing out there. And I believe I handed that out earlier. You should have a hard copy. I think it's exhibit 1B is on the bottom right corner. We have it. Um, I don't know if you want to move that up or not. So, see it. Okay. Do we know if they're power washing next door or what? The <laughs> 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 no, bathrooms are being renovated on this level. Is this the same thing that they have? Yes. I guess, yeah, you can just. Well, I was thinking, if, if this is the same thing the that same each thing, of you has, yeah. then maybe face it this way so people can see it. 
And one thing just to, from a keeping the trains running on time perspective, we have a hard stop at noon and it's, um, it's quarter of 11 now and I want to, so I'll try I don't and rush you, quickly. but I do kind of want to rush you um, <laughs> okay. because I want to make sure that we have an opportunity for us to ask questions and for the community to offer uh, their comments. I understand. As much yeah, as I'm possible. trying to organize as much as I can just to hit all the points. I know, so. I know, um, and I appreciate that. Okay. Okay, so Exhibit 1B, um, and John said it, you know, at the very beginning, but, you know, our development team has maximized the utilization of Sullivan Road from 140 to the proposed site access. There are a lot of constraints with right-of-way. Um, there's utility poles, existing properties. We've worked with the state and the county, you know, reconfigured the site layout of sheets several times at this point, um, and offered road improvements to the extent that we see feasible. Um, improvements beyond what are currently presented will not make this a feasible site for sheets to move forward with. Um, so I'm just going to basically go through this exhibit and just kind of highlight several of the improvements that we're doing to the existing intersection and along the Sullivan Road leg. Um, so as far as consolidating access points, there are currently two large open asphalt access points with little control and consolidation for vehicles entering and exiting the sites. This is on Sullivan Road. There's also two on 140. Um, consolidating to one site access point along Sullivan Road at the far north end of the property line to maximize the potential distance for queuing and separations from 140. So we clearly pushed the site access point on Sullivan Road as far away as 140 that we could possibly get within our right of way to maximize that queuing distance. Um, you know, we're offering an additional lane and that's the best location that we can have to maximize all these, maximize the queuing and improve the operation of Sullivan Road and the traffic flow. Um, so currently there's two southbound lanes on Sullivan Road. Um, there's one shared left through lane and one right turn lane. We're improving that to three southbound Sullivan Road travel lanes, a left, a left through, and a right. So we're creating a new double turn lane onto Maryland 140. And we verified um, auto turn, which is like a, it's a traffic simulation software for large vehicles and box trucks and passenger vehicles to make sure the double left turn would work with the state signal they requested us to do that. And it does. Um, so we have exhibits that we presented to the state highway they have approved um, so we know that the double left turn will work with the constraints and the geometrics on maryland 140. Um, and as you know john and mark has have said the state highway has approved the locations of this they've approved the auto turn layout they're they've they're okay and have you know, backed our improvements to Maryland 140 at Sullivan Road um, within the state right of way. Um, so they've looked at this, you know, over the past couple of years um, very thoroughly, and we've done a lot of concept plans and gave them feedback on what they asked for and incorporated that into our design. Um, so northbound Sullivan Road, we there is currently one northbound road or travel lane. Uh, it's a 12 foot lane with a six foot shoulder. Um, we're creating an additional bypass lane for through vehicles to use if a vehicle is waiting to make a left turn into sheets. So I'll get into the, the queuing a little bit later in the, the 95th percentile and that um, just to try and illustrate that a little bit more than what John has, you know, expressed. But Basically, what, it, what this means is that if, if, there's a, if there's a left turning car waiting to get into sheets, there's a way for through traffic to get around them. It's not going to back up to Maryland 40 at the state road. We provided a, a kind of an exit point to get around and, and not have that potential of people blocking back to 140. And really, it, it just happens at the end of the cycle length anyway, and it, not for very long. But this is just something that we wanted to do to maximize this section of roadway and provide that, you know, extra measure to not have a, a safety concern blocking back to Maryland 140, which exists today. Um, so another thing the state highway required us or wanted us to do was there's a, you can see on my illustration, there's a, a new mountable island that's at the intersection of 140. Um, and that's basically in place to prevent 
people that are in the right turn lane heading southbound on Sullivan Road from going through the intersection. It's more like a physical you know, barrier to help to prevent them from going through. And there's, that's in place today for the right turn lane. So the state highway wanted us to keep that in place, so we are. Um, we're also installing a new traffic signal pole along Maryland 140 in the median. And that's because our, obviously our lane alignment on Sullivan Road is shifting and we wanna make sure that the lane use signs align properly with the new lane um, locations. So we're putting in a brand new pole you know, we'll put in new traffic signal heads for that, any equipment or wiring required, and make sure that these lane use signs line up with the lanes that we are proposing. So uh, there is a existing tree line along the north side of the property on Sullivan Road um, between the residential driveway and this, the ex existing commercial sites. Um, and one of the comments that has come up from, I know engineering has been sight distance. So currently the, the, the site, those trees block sight lines out there today with our, with our improvements, we'll be you know, trimming the ones closest to Sullivan Road back and putting in new landscaping um, along with landscaping ac across the entire site itself. Um, the, the county right of way, there's several residential properties um, that abut this and their driveways back to Sullivan Road. Um, so the county right of way comes maybe a third of the way up their driveways. Um, so, you know, making that makes sight distance a little bit more manageable um, from a county standpoint to make sure that it doesn't obstruct people maybe looking left out to turn right onto Sullivan Road to make sure they can see safely. So our proposed um, stopping sight distance um, along Sullivan Road coming out falls within the county right of way, not on private property, so it can be maintained. Um, and we realize, you know, with there are several driveways to the north um, that if a vehicle, you know, was parked in one of these at one time, it could possibly obstruct sight distance. But we will present all the sight distance information, you know, work with engineering on providing those exhibits that they requested on the last review. Um, but we realize that the residential driveways there do, you know, they present a challenge, but we feel that having the, the stopping sight distance within the county right of way, you know, provides that baseline safety, um, addresses the safety concern. Um, and now the, the queuing exhibits. So I also, Mark, if you wanna just flip those, but I gave you guys each, um, Three exhibits. There's an existing AM, a background AM, and a future AM. And AM is the, as we talked about, is the most significant queuing that's out there. So we, this is the worst case from a peak hour standpoint. Um, to do this. So I'm going to pull these. Out. And I know we don't have numbers on there, so I'm going to just give you guys lengths right now for existing background and future, so you can kind of relate to what the distances are. So our site access point is about 235 feet um, from the stop bar at Maryland 140. So under existing AM, the average queue is 203 feet. The 95th percentile queue is 361 feet. Background AM. Average queue is 238 feet. 95th percentile queue is 415 feet. So future, what I did is that we have, there's two marks on there because there's two lanes now for left turns, but I'll just give you an average. Um, so AM average queue is 142 feet and 95th percentile queue is 249 feet. So if you're comparing that to background, and the average queue in background is 238 feet. Future with improvements is 142 feet. That's a pretty significant drop in queue length. And 95th percentile queue in background is 415 feet. Future with improvements is 249 feet. What's the uh, average length of a car? You know, put that in. 20 feet. How many cars am I going to have in front of me now feet. versus now? We use you know. 25 feet. Yeah, 25 to be conservative, but yeah, 20, 25. Um, 
So just, I mean, I think the illustration is put into perspective a lot more than the numbers, just to see those marks on there and to see where it comes back. And we realized that, you know, the 235 foot access point location is not as long as the 249 foot future 95th percentile queue by, you know, less than 15 feet or so. But, you know, once again, we maximize the queue that we could provide with our site access location on the north side of our property. We feel like, um, you know, this is a, this is a, this is a scenario where the, the 95th percentile queue doesn't, it doesn't occur very often. And I, I have a, I just want to do a quick couple sentences. I won't go on too much longer about this, but just about the 95th percentile queue and explain that a little bit more. But. So the 95th percentile queue, this percent basically means, you know, what percent of the time is the queue at that amount or that length? So average is 50%, right? 50% of the time it's less than that, 50% of the time it's more than that. So this is 95th percent. That means 95% of the time you go out there, this is going to be less than that mark. So since this is a traffic signal, 180 second length, you know, it's, it's only going to occur when right before the Sullivan Road approach turns green. So it's only going to be to that, that max 95th percent queue, you know, for probably five or 10 seconds at the most. And that's not even going to happen every signal cycle. And even if it does happen, we have a bypass lane for people to get around them. So I just think that a lot of these exhibits are it's deceiving to see all these cars stacked like that because it's a very, it's not going to be presented like that most of the time. Most of the time it's just going to be open and people will be able to, you know, navigate in and out um, of our site. Um, is that 180 second signal length, is that what is, that's existing or is that future? We keep it the same. The same. Yes. Um, Yeah, and I just, once again, just want to illustrate that we, we realize there's constraints on Sullivan Road. Um, we, we've maximized the road width. There's, you know, to the east side, there's utility poles, there's property lines. We realize Han Road is there. Uh, it's existing condition. We're trying to provide, you know, reduce the queue as much as possible to improve the flow on all, all roads in this area. Um, and I, th I think that's, those are the points I really wanted to hit on. Um, so I Thank think that you. concludes my <laughs> so <clears throat> the way I envision this kind of going that forward deep, yeah no, no, I appreciate it. Um, Mr. McGuire do you have anything else you wanted to add I just want to say that concludes our presentation we do have uh, obviously the speakers available to answer questions we have some engineering support people that I introduced earlier if there are engineering type questions and we have people from the sheets organization if you have any questions for them so I think from a process standpoint, maybe I think, Laura, you wanted to make some, some concluding comments, and then maybe we could have an opportunity to ask, all the, after her concluding comments, any questions we have of the county or of, of Sheets. And then after um, we do that, then um, we'll open it up to the community to ask questions. Well, I'm not ask questions. You don't get to ask questions. <laughs> you get to make comments. Um, and we'll open it up for you all to make comments. Um, I know we're limited on time. Um, Um, so, Laura, why don't I turn it over to you yep. then to go ahead and make your conclusion? And I comments. will be super short. Um, just one clarification we do do a check for adequacy of public facilities, so certification of the adequacy of public facilities for site plans, which we do mention to you, and that's in Chapter 155. It is not in Chapter 156, so just to note. Um, and I just wanted to conclude with a reminder that there is no action being requested of you today. Um, and that concept site development plan, which would be inclusive of the site layout, anything we've talked about that, that gets modified, not modified, right? It's the entire site, plus in this case, the traffic mitigation measures. That just needs to be advanced through the technical development plan review process. And then it will come before you as a concept plan for informational purposes, and then it will go through that final plan stage and come back before you for an approval. So those, those are the, the next 
steps, if you will. So just a reminder, no action is being requested today, and we, staff, we're looking for a concept plan review. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I think what we'll do, like I said, is I'm sure we'll all have lots of questions, and we'll um, pose those. And then we will um, turn it over to um, you all, the public, to make comments on this. Um, and typically I start just because I have the center seat and I have the microphone. <laughs> and you all are kind enough to let me do that. The high level, I guess, Mr. McGuire, getting to your point, um, I sort of see this as the plan you're presenting as it relates to traffic, and I get and I appreciate the point you're making. You're asking us to focus mostly on the traffic. You understand there are other things that would be addressed in a site, in a site plan in the normal, normal course, but from your perspective, from Sheets' perspective, if the traffic doesn't work, then the plan won't work. And that's why you want us focusing on the traffic stuff first, um, because it has a timing impact and it has a financial impact. And um, am I getting that mostly right, Mr. McCoy? Absolutely. I must have done a pretty good job. <laughs> you did a very good job. Yep. Uh, everyone did. Um, and then to my way of thinking, the question is, is, is the traffic plan you're submitting for, our, for us to talk about today in the special report, is it the best you can do and is it good enough? Um, and what I hear you saying is this is the best you can do. You can't do any better. That's is, exactly right. Am I getting right. that right? Yes. Okay. And if it's not good enough, then the development for sheets at this location probably doesn't work. That's just the economic reality of the circumstance. Is my yes. understanding right on that, too? Correct. Okay. I just want to make sure I've got my starting points right <coughs> as, I, um, as I ask questions. Um, and I think, you know, we may have to take a, a recess to get some legal advice on some procedures and things um, around this. Um, but I think it helps to understand the concerns and, and what you're trying to address and how you're trying to um, allocate some scarce resources as, as the process either moves forward or, or it doesn't. So I think um, that's helpful to me. From a queuing standpoint, let me just get to the, to the traffic stuff. Um, on, on the queuing future exhibit that you gave us, yes. um, the one thing, I, and I might have missed it, just a concern I have, though, is when you're going north, so you're on 140, you take a right on Sullivan Road, and you want to turn then left into Sheets. Mm -hmm. There's a left turn lane there under, under your plan. Um, that left turn lane doesn't seem to be terribly long, and I'm not sure how many cars it can accommodate. What happens if you end up with cars queuing up where they're backing up close to 140 or onto 140 so that so, the right yeah. turn, I mean, the people can't get by on the right so hand So let me clarify, that, that's, so it's, it's really a bypass lane, it's not a left turn lane. So we just did the left turn to be kind of clear for the, the commission on that it's used as a turn lane. But really what it, a bypass lane isn't marked as a left turn lane at all. It's really just, you have two lanes, you know, they're, on this case, one's 10 foot, one's 10 and a half feet for the bypass because it's up against the curb. We wanted to make it a little bit bigger. Um, the, the one that has a left is really, it's a through lane. It's not going to be have a left turn in it, and that's what's going to be the through lane, you know, most of the time. The only time people are going to use this extra lane to the side of it is when there's a left turn in the through lane trying to make a turn. And I've, I'm sure you've seen bypass lanes before. They just, they bump out and they come back. And it's really just to allow through traffic to get around the turning movement. So it won't be signed as a left turn lane at all. You know, it's going to be a through lane. The only time it's going to Really, the bypass lane is really going to be used is when there's a left turn lane that's trying to turn into sheets. And why is that better than having it designated as a left turn lane into sheets? Uh, well, bypass lanes, um, there's less tapers and stuff from a design standpoint. You, can, you don't have to have um, the lane shifts be as, as great. Um, oftentimes, when there's lower volumes that aren't warranted really for left turn lanes, you can do bypass lanes. Um, and also in this, like, you really need to shift through traffic, like a full lane to get them properly tapered for a, for a full lane shift. And in this case, you know, with the, the constraint of having 140 right there, it's, it would be difficult and the Roy Rogers to, 
to shift them that distance that quickly, safely. So the bypass lane was just a better design option here um, for all those reasons. Because the, I mean, just in my everyday life of driving a car, yeah. um, I've been in situations where two or three cars ahead of me is turning left into a shopping center. Yeah. The car behind it didn't realize they were turning left, so now they're sitting there waiting. I am thinking I don't want to, well, I do want to turn left, so now I can't tell that the car in front of me is sitting where it's sitting, so now I decide I'm going to go around it, only to find out two cars ahead of me, they're turning left. And now I can't get over where I want to go. Right. If the lane had been designated as a left turn lane, I would have known that everybody sitting in that lane had committed to turn left, or at least they're supposed to. And, and you can see from the geometry, like if you're coming on the plan um, from 140, you know, after Roy Rogers, it kind of opens up and gets wider at Han Road. So you'd really have to sh create a brand new turn lane in that short amount of distance and get all the through traffic down, which isn't really a safe scenario to do that. Okay. So we're really just trying to keep the through lane basically in line, just pro provide an, al an alternate route for people to get around so it doesn't have a queue back to 140 and, you know, have a safety concern from that regard. The, um, the only other thing I'll say, and then I'll turn it over, I, I'm not really that troubled by the, um, the entrance on 140 that you've moved further west and closer to the community pond for a couple of reasons. One is, and I could be persuaded otherwise, obviously, I haven't made up my mind, but just from what I've heard so far, number one, there aren't that many cars going into the pond. I think it was 19 during... I think it was 14 hour. and 19. 40, yeah. Okay, right. 14. Okay, so not too many. Um, uh, secondly, it's not that different than what we all encounter going the other way on 140 up at the 140 shopping center where there are multiple entrances. There's one lane and we certainly know to pay attention that if somebody's moving in or turning into one of those entrances, somebody yeah. else is coming out and accelerating. I get that it's, it'd be better not to have it the, this way, but, um, but you have to deal with what's there. Um, and so um, I'm, I understand the concerns and I understand all the stuff that's been laid out about turning, coming down uh, Sullivan Road and then turning right onto 140 and merging in at, and speeding up at the same time somebody else is slowing down to turn into, um, into sheets. But we already have that reality right now and somebody's coming down Sullivan Road, turning right on 140 and accelerating and somebody else is moving into the same lane to slow down to turn into the park. <coughs> um, it's just the way it is. We could close the park but we decided not to do that because on balance we think having a park is worthwhile and people can safely navigate that. I didn't know, I, I know I think Ms. Matthias gave us a statistic, said there were 33 accidents over a three-year period in this area, but I don't really have a, a baseline. I mean, is that a lot or is, are we saying that looks really good compared to other data? It's kind of a data point without any, uh, and I'm not being critical, but I'm just saying I don't, sure. uh, by itself I can't really weigh that too much. Um, and I said I said be the last thing, but this will really be the last thing. Um, <laughs> right now we have a property that's sitting there that's, in my view, not being utilized to its highest and best use. And the community benefits when property is used to its highest and best use, um, commercially and otherwise. And so um, I just want to say I appreciate the effort you've made, one, to get in front of us, and two, to put together a plan that first does no harm to the intersection and in fact seems to have the um, potential to make it better so that you can have this property go to a higher and better use. Now from a community standpoint, would we rather it be a, a garden or you know something else? Maybe, I mean, but no matter what the use is, it involves um, these same set of issues mm -hmm. at some level. and. Um, so we're, we'll try to balance out those things. A big part of what we do is balancing interests. Um, so with that, I'll be quiet. And Janice, I'll turn it over to you. Um, yes. So the distance between the entrance of, of 140 and the pond road, how far is that? Uh, let me, I'll scale it for you real quick. I'll tell you exactly what it is. Glad I always carry this thing around with me. It helps. <laughs> so we're about from the middle of the site access point is uh, 120 feet from the the entry to the park. Okay. And why wouldn't you move it back a little coming? 
Yes, thank uh, you. We have to meet state clearance to 200 feet from okay. the Kurt where Tangent's in. So I think we're at like 230 now. And it's, it's I mean, it's going to be at the most 20 or 30 feet to the right, and that's it. That's all we could do to, because the state doesn't want that weave like people turning right. right and left. They want to have distance between the site access for sheets. So that's why they have those standards. So we wouldn't be able to move it. And even to get the bare minimum of 200, it would only be like another 20 feet or so. We could move it to the right. So it's really to, to satisfy State Highway because it is their road that they maintain. We have to meet that off that 200-foot um, that clearance from Sullivan Road. Okay. All right. I'm good. Just kind of stick with that, that, that sure. section. Sure. So that 200-foot State Highway um, mandate, you know, whatever, sure. is, is that for the acceleration lane? Is that an acceleration lane requirement or deceleration it's literally just a, a distance from an access point standpoint from a where the curve ties into the the straight like the tangent section 140 so it's a distance you have to have for site access it's just that does get a little screwy up there mm -hmm. and i think it's to prevent that shorter distance of people trying to weave in and out i took my 16 year old grandson for his first night driving um last night and we went up there he survived. <laughs> did you? I almost didn't. <laughs> so it is a little go goofy up there, especially when you get past, uh, you know, with 31 and all that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Did you? Because I, I had a couple others. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm Thank you. Um, the Han Road that Jeff was talking about is that that um, that right lane that is a through lane. Does that require any uh, setback or movement? onto that um, or widening uh, or, or is, I don't know if that's personal property going north. Yeah, we're, so we're not widening the road there. There's a, we look, there's property lines that are right up against, there's an existing utility pole that's a couple feet off yeah. the curb that yeah. it just, that's why once again, from a constraint standpoint, we, we got as much in this, this area as we possibly could. So the sight line doesn't really change a lot coming out of Han Road. Onto we're not changing the curb line at all on that side. Um, it's staying the way it is, correct. Where are the the, uh, the tank locations where the uh, tractor trailer pulls mm -hmm. in and loads the gas? It's uh, If you look on the screen, it's the to the right, these underground, there's three circular or oval shapes. And those where, are underground. Right. Where do they fill them? Where is the tanker going to pull over and fill them? Right, right there. On top, or, or that little dash to the left of it. Or. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, that was um, that was good for me. That's good. Thank you, Matt. Do you want to? All right. Um, I'll just state a couple facts from the way I see it. I mean, this property has been under contract since since 2020 with Sheets to try to make something work, and so currently, right now, we have three idle businesses. Mm -hmm. But at one time. As I remember, the long building, I think, was a Napa way back when with quite a bit of traffic in and out of, along with many other things. You had an Exxon there that was a gas station, and you had a convenience store behind it. Mm -hmm. And it had two entrances off of each road with current road conditions. And, I mean, from my take, it's vastly improving that intersection by adding a lane on either side, basically, mm -hmm. to help traffic move around. Mm -hmm. So, I don't, you know... Once again, I'm kind of like these guys. The, the exit entrance off of 140 is a little concerning. I know State Highway has their uh, standards, but currently right now there's two entrances out on that side, and I, the second one's right at 200 feet or close to it, but the first one's not even 100 feet currently. So we don't have much say in that no, that State you, Highway. So yeah, no. that's all I have. Thank yeah. you. I'll, I'll echo that, and I know it may be uh, disconcerting to some of the citizens here who live off Sullivan, but I, I see this as an improvement to what has been there and what is there. Um, but my my issues when I read, uh, when I saw the emails coming through and read those were uh, for the, the, the neighbors close by and immediately adjacent to this property, uh, you know, how that screening was going to be handled. Um, and then the traffic, those were the two issues that I thought coming in here, um, you know, I wanted to hear more about. 
And I would like to, to just hear someone say, or, or there to be a, a, a meeting of the minds, whether it's from the county, the, the city of Westminster, and you as traffic engineers, and maybe even the state, that this is the best we can do. And I'll say it, I, I would think that anytime we can eliminate a curb cut on a, on a highway where traffic's going, uh, what's the speed limit there, 40? 45? 45. Okay, it's 30? 25, 30? That's the speed limit? Okay. So anytime we can eliminate a curb cut, and I'll just confess, I don't think I go 25 through there. Um, uh, that, you know, confession is good for the soul. Um, anyway, I, I, I'm thinking if we could eliminate a curb, a curb cut on 140, it would be a good thing. So, but then it's very unconventional to be pulling into a park to get gas and visit a convenience store. You've basically gone past the entrance. I get that. I get that it's unconventional. But again, I, th I would think that would be an improvement, but I would love to hear from the state, from, 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 from the experts that, no, this is the best one. This is the best for everybody. If this is the best we can do, it's the best. But I would have I thought, and you addressed it, um, I would have thought that combining those two drives would have made it things slightly better um but again I, i'll i'll defer to the experts on that yeah and just to, so speed limits i got these written down so maryland 140 is 45 mile an hour posted yep. uh sullivan road is 35 mile an hour posted yeah i i'm i, I think i'm going probably 50 right through there as you know personally so um you don't need to say anymore no no i know I think, yeah that's good but but uh, but i'm just saying I, I don't think i'm the exception and and when you're coming through there like that and you've got four lanes coming down to three um which is basically what's happening just after this and that's not y'all's fault that's just the design there's a lot going on there and if we could eliminate a curb cut i would have thought it would have been a positive but again i see this as a as an improvement to what's there now very good. Any questions or comments? One of the good things about going last is is pretty much everybody <laughs> brings everything else, so I don't have much more to add. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do agree. There's there's just a lot going on there with 97, the park, and obviously the different businesses. Um, I mean, from a traffic standpoint with all the different lanes or the addition of the lanes, I definitely think it will... Uh, it can't make it any worse there i'd like to think and obviously too from an uh, aesthetic standpoint personally i think that this is definitely going to be much more visually appealing than what is currently there now which essentially is three abandoned buildings um but yeah that's really it i mean everybody pretty much hit on anything else that i could have brought up very good well thank you um so at this point what we'd like to do is uh open it up for public comment. Let me remind you of a couple things real quick. One is we have a hard stop at uh, 12 o'clock, so we just have to stop then no matter what. So I think I'm gonna try to impose the, the three minute uh, limit if we can, so we can give everybody a chance to have an equal say. Um, we probably are gonna wanna take uh, a recess to get some legal advice, so we wanna have time for that. Um, and um, I would ask you to be respectful in your comments to us and to your other members in the community because um, we, we like to hear diverse comments and it actually helps us if people will disagree with each other respectfully to give us a broader perspective uh, of the issues that we're hearing. So with that, Mr. Huff, I see you standing at the microphone, so uh, please proceed. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm Dan Huff. I'm with the City of Westminster. Um, I'm on Common, uh, Common Council, City Council. Um, and just to kind of give you a little bit of a historical perspective with the city, because it's kind of odd. Westminster City is odd from this standpoint. We have about 20,000 citizens, but we have 40,000 in our water sewer area. So this is why this property is being annexed into the city. It's on our water sewer area, but it's not technically within the city, but it's right on the boundaries. And obviously we want it to be part of the city. Um, and I would say if it was part of the city, we would not be here today because we would be before the Westminster Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, but as part of the annexation agreement, it was agreed upon that it would come to you all as part of this process, and then once the plan is approved, then it would come into the city. 
So I just want to state for the record that the city of Westminster is supportive of this property being annexed into the city. Um, and no offense to the property owner, I know some of you know me, I'm very blunt and straightforward, but the, the, this property is currently a hodgepodge mess. You have three buildings, you have three different uses, it is a mess. The fact is that this redevelopment project will make this site much more aesthetically attractive and in my humble opinion, better in the long run for the community because I'm getting rid of three uses with a total mess of what's going on with all these massive curb, uh, curbs in and out all over the place and making a much more defined site. Um, and I'm not a traffic engineer, but as some of you remember, I used to be in your shoes uh, before I was elected to Westminster City Council. Um, the cold hard reality is this is a redevelopment project. And when you're doing a redevelopment project, you cannot reach perfection. And having reviewed the traffic study myself and listened to everybody here today, the reality is the applicant is making the situation better. And I think that's critical to what we're analyzing here. So I encourage you all to support this redevelopment project. Do not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huff. Who would like to speak next? Please step up to the microphone if you can. And all we need you to do is state your name and address and then we welcome your comment. Uh, my name is Joel Dyer. I'm a resident of 17 Sullivan Road, three doors down from Han Road, and is going to be directly affected by this change. My major concern is not the business. My major concern is the traffic uh, that they're presenting. Uh, the ideas that have been presented uh, are going to greatly affect myself. I'll include my neighbors, although I only speak for myself. Um, Sullivan Road is also already being heavily used. Um, there's been a lot of residential building behind us. I'm all in favor of that. I mean, not, yes, I'm all in favor of that. But the way that they have this plan right now, where I live, it's going to affect the quality of my life. And I feel that that's something that has to be addressed as this project goes forward. They've never sat in my driveway and waited through three traffic signals to get out because there's not a lot of people who respect where we live and their efforts to get onto 140. Uh, excuse me, I'm nervous. That's okay, take your time. The, um, the net impact is gonna be that we are going to be affected directly. The residents right there, uh, Sullivan Road is not, it's an improved road, it has no shoulders, there's no escape to get out of there. There's no place to, for anybody to move in the event of an emergency. And there's also on this, the, what, the drawings that I saw, a proposed increase of the speed limit from 35 to 45 on Sullivan Road. People don't go 35 now. And I know that the county has done some enforcement back there, but not enough to stop it. We don't need more speeding traffic. We don't need people who have been frustrated now trying to make the turn into sheets where it's gonna to be to come zooming by my house blowing off their steam, that, that's just not, it will hurt my quality of life. Um, with all these learned people who have spoken about traffic and the times that they, um, whatever times they did their studies, um, the, 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 the fact that people are, they always said that pe ten, two, 10 people are making the turn into the existing properties there, um, again, those three properties None of them are viable businesses right now. Caples doesn't do anything there. The Exxon's closed. The Vachelis is closed. That is really um, not a good representation of the traffic that's going there. And that and the fact that they're gonna take some neighbor's properties is just unacceptable to us as residents. And I feel that as a 17 year resident of that home, I, I would like my <coughs> thoughts to be um, reviewed with some respect. Thank you. Thank you. 
By the way, uh, just so you know, we've all of us have read all of your comments that have been submitted in writing, so we have the benefit of those um, as well. Would anyone else like to speak? I'm not. Yes, ma'am. Um, chairman and committee board members, my name is Cheryl Dougal. I live at 9 Sullivan Road in Westminster. We have lived at that house for almost 39 years as of August of this, sum this summer. And we are um, really gravely concerned about the traffic. Um, no offense, it is a hot mess right now. And adding those lanes and turning into the sheets um, is gonna pose even more chaos and more car accidents and more people getting hurt. We have people that walk their dogs, that go out with their kids to play in their lawns and in their yards. And the proposal is that they're going to take half of our lawn and move our beautiful cherry trees out so that they can make that turn lane to get around. And then I just, I just see it making more of a hassle and more of a problem and more car accidents. When you're coming off 140, and people are going 50, 55 miles an hour, they hightail it like down that road the same speed. They don't even go the speed limit. And if you're gonna propose that they raise that and you've got kids that are being outside and waiting for the bus, this proposed time is not just certain times of the day. This road is busy. And now that we've added homes and neighborhoods behind us, it has grown exponentially. Um, sorry, I just made a couple of notes. Sure. We're concerned also about our property value. As this sheets comes in, what will happen to our property value? Some of the people, if they decide to move and they're taking part of their driveway, they will not be able to park their vehicles their houses will not be able to sell and they will be stuck. I don't think that that's a viable option and that's certainly not fair. We have lived in this community for, like I said, for almost 39 years. We have loved living here. We have felt safe. We have felt protected. We have had police and ambulances with that area that has just caused so many accidents and they've been so kind. There were a couple of accidents that came and almost hit our house. They jumped the fencing, they jumped the flower bed of the bushes that were there. And because our house was sloped, it almost came and hit our brick in our garage. And that would be even more of an impact and hitting our house if they removed that. We'd have to do some kind of retaining wall because our house is sloped there on the corner. I mow our lawns. I take pride in our, in our neighborhood, in our community. We're the edge of what we live and what we have loved. We can't even mow our lawn on the side of Han Road without feeling like we're gonna be hit by a car with either our riding lawn mower or our push mower. And my sister goes out to work every day and even my dad and I, when we travel, we have to sit and wait for the traffic to bypass to get off of Selrone, Sullivan Road and Han Road without a light there of any kind. It has been dangerous and we have felt unsafe. I, I, love, I don't want to move. I love our property. I love the area that we live in. I love our neighbors. I love this community feeling that we have. And to feel like it's being stripped away I'm having a hard time with that. I don't, I don't mind sheets. I've used them down off of Sullivan Road, but there's a huge one right off of um, 140, not Sullivan, 140, and that is a great big property that um, Sheets has gotten into. There's one off of Tawny Town as you're going into Tawny Town, and there's one going off of tw uh, 30 going into, or 27 going into 30 right there in Manchester. I think they have more ample spaces of using those gas stations. I think the thing that we need less of is gas stations and banks. 
in my personal opinion. Let me, let me ask you, since we're running out of time, to sure. go ahead and just give us your, your concluding remarks, if you don't mind, so we can give others a chance as well. Sure. I, I love our community. I just hope that we can address that. If it was your property being taken, and if it was your area and your neighborhood that you lived in, I hope that you would want to feel safe for your kids to play and meet out at the bus stop without feeling like they were going to get hurt and even worse, causing a bigger accident. And I just hope that you guys keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, sir. Hi, Sean Larkin, Four Sullivan Road. Uh, I just want to chime in with the city. Uh, I've known the property owner for quite some time, over 20 some years, and I know it's been a dream of his to open and brighten and bring the gateway into Westminster. And I applaud Sheets for coming in and wanting to do that for the city and for the county. It has been an eyesore, and we've been working on that for quite some time. For Sheets want to come in here, uh, I know their corporation. They build it from within. They uh, bring a lot of commitment. Um, for them to want to dig in their pockets to want to widen and improve the intersection, I applaud them for doing that also. As a businessman in the community, not everyone's willing to do that. It takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of courage, and uh, I applaud them for wanting to help Westminster, to help Carroll County in this process. Uh, they bring a lot of uh, commitment, they bring a lot of people that understand an intersection of this magnitude uh, we all know, we've heard uh, what's going on with this intersection. I've seen it firsthand. Uh, I've listened to them today. Uh, the knowledge that they bring to expand and make this intersection a lot safer and a lot better, uh, I've been very impressed with. Um, and I think that moving forward in the county, I think these guys are going to do a good job for us. Thank you for today. Thanks, sir. Would anyone else like to offer any comments? Yes, ma'am. I'm Karen Dyer, and I live at 17 Sullivan Road. And I agree with my, what my husband says. It takes forever to get out of our driveway. But I do have a concern about Han Road. And it's been a concern of mine since I've lived here. There has been so many accidents, so many near misses of people, because the majority of them are turning left. They're not turning right. And you're going to put this like lane here where you want people to kind of stand to be ready to turn into the sheets. So instead of now going across two lanes of traffic, they're going to be going across five lanes of traffic. I kind of have a hard time trying to understand how that's an improvement. So, you know, my suggestion would be, and I'm, you know, maybe it's just out of my purview to say this, if you're going to do that, you make it a right turn only lane. Don't let people, there's been so many accidents at that intersection, just trying to get across the traffic. And it, you know, the queuing line, I, I laugh about that, because that queuing line can go all the way down the road past the turn and the roundabout in the morning, particularly when you got school buses. So picking like one little hour to look at it, I hope you did more than just one hour because there are times you can't get out anywhere along there for 10, 15 minutes. So thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Would anyone else like to speak? Yes, sir. How you doing today? My name is Earl Bloomer. I live at 14A Sullivan Road, uh, which I also wanted to address was you guys have for the Cables Car Company at 14 Sullivan. Uh, me and my neighbor are 14. I don't know where the confusion has come on the map quest and everything else. Um, but uh, she brought up a lot of the concern about with the raising the speed, lim uh, speed limit and with having to cross the, from make a left hand turn on Han Road, It, I feel it is going to cause a lot more problems because most to the accidents that I have seen is everybody trying to make a left to go across all the lanes to make a right onto 140. And also with the raising of speed limits, we have school buses that stop in front of our house. And two days ago, me and my neighbor were standing outside talking about this meeting. And it was two or three cars while one of the children were getting off the bus now at the speed limit it sped past as they were stopped. The school bus was blaring the horn to try to make them stop 
didn't do anything. So I feel with raising the speed limit in that area, it's going to make it a lot di more difficult and potentially scary for us as parents with the kids crossing the street if nobody, if everybody's in a hurry to go faster. But that's that, and like everybody's talked about with addressing with widening the roads, it looks the original drawings on the paper it showed with expanding in front of the houses. I'm not 100% sure on some of the drawings I see here today. I don't see that. But I understand the added turn lanes to make a left next to the sheets and all might help. But it's going to cause a lot more problems with the Han Road exit for making a left because the biggest thing is trying to get across that street. And there's a lot of cars that use in that neighborhood that come out that way to go to 140 to make a right in the neighborhood. But that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey, Jeff, can I ask real quick? Uh, we haven't seen anything about raising the speed limit. Is that something that's in the plans by the county? We're not changing the speed limit. It's all the drawing that I saw. <clears throat> Let me just let me ask Mr. Mur one second. Let me, why don't we get this point of information clarified? Yeah, there are no changes in speed limits proposed on any of that. Design speed isn't posted. That's just based on engineering calculations for 85th percentile speed. So that's how you design and check site distance measures. It's so that's a calculation speed. you do for design. Correct. Reasons, but it's not, you're not actually changing We're the speed limit. We're not changing the speed limit. Correct. Okay. Posted speed limit's 35 on Sullivan Road, staying that way. Okay. Okay. That's I, I have a question. The, um, how much road frontage, are, are, are they losing some on Han? No, we're no. not taking any frontage. Correct, John? No, no other property owner is losing any uh, of their property. The, the Anthony property, the, the subject property, I is losing about three and a half feet. It still needs to be surveyed to be more precise, but for the entire stretch of their Sullivan Road frontage. Okay. All right. Would anyone else like to? By the way, coming today, one of the benefits is we can clarify some of these things, which is always helpful, I think. Um, would anyone else like to offer any comments? Uh, we have two, so uh, yes, sir. My name is Patrick DeAnthony uh, at 3711 Hawks Hill in New Windsor. One thing I was thinking about is obviously with the property owner giving up uh, three and a half feet and being able to add a third lane, if this weren't to go through and the county had to address this later, they would not have the third lane and it would only be two lanes, correct? So the stacking and the queuing would go back Sullivan farther in the future. Just mm -hmm. thinking about if, again, if this weren't to happen, you put three high volume tenants in there and you're gonna jam up that <clears throat> intersection with traffic anyway, obviously two entry exit points on both sides. The county will only have two lanes to work with instead of three and that, you know, spreading that out to help the queuing. Um, so I'll just notice that, that this long term would be very beneficial. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Michelle Smith, 102 Han. I'm here to speak on behalf of the neighbors. Um, I know what their concerns are, and I've been listening to them for the past week or so before the meeting. Um, there is a lot of traffic concerns, not just related to sheets, but in general at this intersection. Of course, you've heard the statistics presented on the accidents. But there is a lot of concern about what you just heard from Mr. Bloomer, about the children involved, also the egress in and access into the park area. There's plenty of people that use the park, lots of families with children. I go there regularly. I also have to make a left turn in order to get a right turn onto 140 to access points that are 31 and beyond, up towards Tawny Town and out 15, um, up to Gettysburg. So I do use that area. But we have a lot of people that make a left turn onto Sullivan, and they will be doing that to access the sheets. But they also make an immediate right onto Han, and they plow up Han Road. The speed limit is posted at 30, but because they are coming up a hill as well, they are going much faster. 
So we have a lot of concerns, just like they mentioned about mowing lawns and such. Same with me. I actually mow my own lawn. Um, I also wanted to ask about, I don't mind having the sheets there. That's not my concern. But I'm concerned about 24-7 operation, the lighting that they might put up that would impact others, the noise levels, and the screening. So well, I think that's some. And just so you know, that, that would be that will be dealt with in yeah, the ordinary I, course. But I wanted to also put that out as my sure. comment that I'm Absolutely. not yeah, only concerned that. about traffic patterns and the the safety and health of others. Sure, it's Thank very you. concerning. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to offer comments? Yes, sir. Good morning, Good morning. Brian Cook, uh, 14 Sullivan Road. I uh, just wanted to compliment your engineer. He did have one thing perfect to say. 140 is high speed. Um, I did happen to go down 140 the other night uh, with a friend. The average speed is about 65 to 70 miles an hour on that road. It's going to be very hard getting into not only sheets, but trying to turn into uh, Sullivan Road. So just wanted to throw that out and that Han Road just piggyback and that Han Road is is awful trying to make that left hand turn um, I know I've seen several misses seen a few small you know fender benders um, at that uh, intersection there so that's all I wanted to add to it so thank you thank you folks yep thank you sir any other comments Yes, sir. My name is Benjamin Yingling. I live at 54 West Green Street, Westminster, Maryland. Former Westminster City Council member, former Planning and Zoning Commission member, former Chair of Economic Development when this, first, this project first came to the city. So I can't speak on behalf of the city now. Mr. Hoff did that, but we supported it then. I mean, the bottom line is, it is right now not the highest, best use. We agree on that. Um, I think that it's clearly been demonstrated by the applicant it's going to improve the intersection from a flow. I mean, the intersection is failing, all right? And one of the things I think, too, is it is a permitted use. And drawing from my time on the Planning and Zoning Commission, one of the things that applicants always came to me about is like, we just want to know. We just want a decision to be made so we can move on to the stuff like screening, you know, um, like, like lighting, you know, the things that could really have like daily impacts on the residences. So from a procedural standpoint, I'm just, I'm hoping, and from what I think, I, at least I heard from the applicant, and the, Mr. Chair, you mentioned something about getting counsel on you know, procedures, and I know the county is not saying you have to make a decision, but from my experience, like, I always like to, to at least make that decision so that the applicant can or won't move forward. And that's in the benefit of the applicant and frankly, the property owner. I'm a business owner. There are business owners sitting up here. Uh, I think that's fair to them. So uh, that was my comments. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I add one more thing. Can you step to the microphone? So they record this and they broadcast it. We want to make sure people at home can hear you. Uh, I was just texting with a friend of mine with the city police department and um, with the old sheets that used to be at 304 Main Street, uh, I think piggybacking on what some of the other folks said about safety as well. I know Sheets had a lot of um, drugs and fighting issues. I think we're concerned about that happening out our way as well. So I just wanted to add that on too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other any other comments? All right. Seeing none. Um, I I would like now to. Um, You'll have to help me, Mr. Allman, with the process. But I, th I would like for us to be able to stand in recess to get some legal advice from you. Absolutely. So we would just need a motion to close and then um, a recorded vote on that motion to close the meeting. Okay. And your, the motion would be close the meeting for legal advice. Okay. So could I invite a motion to close for legal advice? I'll move that we close the meeting uh, to obtain legal advice. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion before we take a vote? All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? All right. Then we will stand in recess to obtain legal advice, and then we'll return to the dais after we 
Yes, and then reopen the meeting. Yes. Okay. Thank you.
Anyone who wants to stay is welcome. Just take your seats. All right. So at this point, um, the chair would be happy to entertain a motion to reopen the meeting, please. I'll make a motion to reopen the meeting. A second. A motion and a second to reopen the meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstaining? Good. The motion is reopened. Um, at this point, um, Mr. McGuire, you had asked us to take more formal action. Um, we don't believe we can. If we could, we're not going to. Um, but at the same time, um, we want to make clear to you and your clients, first of all, our appreciation for requesting a special report. As I said at the beginning, this helps us as commission. It helps the community to better understand what's going on. And it's an additional step that you all have voluntarily taken to better inform us and the community. And we appreciate that. And I'm sure the community appreciates that. So on behalf of the commission, thank you for that. Um, the other thing that we want to convey to you is that, um, and you've probably gathered this from our comments, that um, when you, if you move forward with a concept plan, you're going to find the same favorable treatment that you've seen today from the commission regarding the traffic um, and the intersection um, in terms of the work that you've put into this. In other words, this commission won't be pulling the rug out from under you. Um, on that aspect, but I hope you also understand, and you heard some of this from the community, the concept plan will be the concept plan. And there's going to be, um, we'd ask you to diligently look at issues of screening and lighting and noise and all the other things that go into that. Um, but on the issue of traffic, we appreciate what you've done. And um, the comments that you've heard today would be comments you will hear at the concept plan as well. So um, that is what we have for today on this item. Mr. So, Chairman, if I could ask, are you speaking for the entire Planning Commission? I am. Yeah. Thank you. So um, thank you all very much, and thank the public for your comments on this, on this project. Um, we will then move on to item 11 of our agenda, which is general public comment, um, not specifically related to this plan. Is there any general public comment? Hearing none, we'll move on to item 12, which is the adjournment. Is there a motion for adjournment? I move we adjourn. I second. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you.